at the 50th annual Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. It is Texas A&M, the winner of the Southwest Conference, matched against Auburn of the Southeastern Conference. And at this moment, Jackie Sherrill is talking to his Aggies, getting them ready for the game. Let's listen. As a team, we're going to play enough to win the ball game. I don't care what happens in the first quarter. I don't care what happens in the second quarter. I don't care what happens. We're going to win the ball game if it comes down to the last second of the ball. Because somebody in this room has got enough to them, has got enough to them, and collectively as a team to do it. We will continue. I ask Dr. Henson to come in here, give us a little prayer. Before he does, I want to ask each one of you, are you prepared? Yes. yes. So, millions and millions of people would love to have your chance. And we're not here because we're not prepared. I want you to take one second or ten seconds and go back and think about how much work you've played, how much sacrifice you've made to be here. Well, man, you prepared. Yes, sir. It's not where you want to be. It's, are you prepared? Dr. Henson. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the preparation that presents this opportunity. And I thank You, Lord, Meanwhile, for every young man in this across room, the way, every coach. Bo Jackson meditating and concentrating, getting ready for the Cotton Bowl. <laughs> So it's the Cotton Bowl. Bo Jackson and Auburn getting ready to take on the Aggies of Texas A&M. Then we'll be right back. Lean on me when you're not strong and I'll be your friend. Everyone who works these holidays, a special salute. From the trucks more people work with than any other make. When you need a truck you can lean on, nothing works like a Chevy truck. Mr. Goodrench knows your car's engine is an inferno of heat and friction. 100, 200 piston strokes of engine wear per second. It needs the life-saving fluid that protects it right. GM Goodrench Motor Oil. Takes the friction, takes the heat. It's everything General Motors asks for in a fine motor oil. Get it from Mr. Goodrench. No one knows your GM car better. No one. If you're concerned about sodium, what antacid do you take? Tums is sodium free, and Tums absorbs more stomach acid than the other leading brands. There's nothing like the feeling of reaching for the top, and there's nothing like the feeling of the good news disposable razor. Light, easy to handle, twin blades. It's a feeling you only get from Gillette. Good news from Gillette. At Duracell, we had to go to the ends of the earth just to top our own copper top. Introducing the new highly improved copper top battery. So improved, it'll last up to 30% longer than any battery we've ever made. The new copper top. We go to great lengths to stay ahead of the pack. Duracell, when it comes to making them last longer, we never stop. We are live from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. It is Texas A&M against the Auburn Tigers, and Pat Dye and the Tigers are coming out onto the field here in Dallas.
Segan and a Jim Nance. For Jackson today, the task is a difficult one. Texas A&M is one of those young, improving teams. A&M wants to springboard from this classic into the preseason rankings next year. They would love to go in touted as one of the top five teams in all of college football. But to do that, they must stop Bo Jackson and the Auburn Tigers. And now the Aggies are coming onto the field. Their first Cotton Bowl since 1968 when they upset a mighty Alabama team. And they are led by a man who once played for Bear Bryant at Alabama, Jackie Sherrill. And the Aggies will come pouring onto this field and the Cotton Bowl will explode. <laughs> some lean, tough times, but now he has risen to the top of the Southwest Conference, and his Aggies are primed for their biggest moment ever to take on the Auburn Tigers and the Heisman Trophy winner, Bo Jackson. Well, Happy New Year, Coach Barsegan, and you know, you have been such a big part of the Cotton Bowl. You brought Notre Dame down here for a couple of great games against Texas. You broadcast the Doug Flutie game with Boston College last year. Let me ask you about these two teams. What about Auburn and A&M, Coach? Well, this is one of the fun things about doing a bowl game. You get to go back and review what they've done the entire year. And the thing that really jumps out, Brent, is the versatility of college football and the contrast between these two teams. For example, Auburn is a running football team. They're going to keep that ball on the ground about 80% of the time. Ordinary passing game. Texas A&M is a very versatile, multiple offensive football team, and but yet both teams have averaged about 400 yards uh, during the course of the season. Now, how about some of the players? For example, Bo Jackson is such an enormous star. Uh, well, he's Mr. Everything, no question about that. Heisman Trophy winner. This is what he's done for this year. 278 rushes, as you see, 17 touchdowns. But when you look at Texas A&M, which is an interesting uh, contrast, they have a one-back offense. These two fullbacks, Anthony Tony. And Roger Vick, 362 rushes, 20 touchdowns. So they can run the football. Now, Aaron, there is a big difference, however, between these two offenses. Exactly right, and that's at the quarterback spot. And the statistics bear that out. Pat Washington, as you see, a 45% passer. Murray, 58.6. But look at the difference in the touchdowns. Two for Washington and 13. The outcome of this game could be determined by the performance of these two player players. Era, how about emotion in this Cotton Bowl Classic? Who do you think it favors right now? Well, Texas A&M is coming in here on a real high. Great confidence. They've won the conference championship the first time that they've come into this game in 18 years. They really want to play. There was some question about how Auburn might come into this game because they were on a downer. They had lost the last second game to the traditional rival. But I watched them practice the last two days. They're up. They've got pride. They want to represent their conference, and they come from a winning program, Brent. All right, so it is going to be Texas A&M and Auburn, and the captains at midfield. Texas Governor Mark White will flip the coin, and we will be back with the opening kickoff of this, the 50th annual Cotton Bowl Classic, live from Dallas, Texas, coming up on CBS in just a moment. Today, millions of Americans are better off than ever before. Better off with expertise on how to manage cash, finance mortgages, and accumulate assets. Better off with the finest insurance protection for their lives, property, and businesses. They're better off under the umbrella of one of America's largest diversified financial enterprises, the Travelers. Have you looked under the Travelers umbrella lately? Get a feel for the true performance of cotton, the way it breathes with you, and how it's soft, comfortable, and so absorbent, the way it practically takes care of itself, and how it's really built to last. That's the true performance you can expect from cotton. Once you get a feel for cotton, 
you won't feel like anything else. These moments were brought to you by the Cotton Growers of America. I thought this demonstration was just advertising, but Denerex tingles. Tells me it's doing more. Regular head and shoulders, no tingle. Both have dandruff medicine, but Denerex adds an extra anti-itch medicine and conditioner, too. Goodbye, head and shoulders. Hello, Denerex. Look, his nose is clogged. See, hardly any breath shows. Now, Dristan Long Lasting. Just one spray treatment has the staying power to clear congestion as long as six four-hour cold capsules. That's 12-hour relief. I'm breathing. Dristan Long Lasting Nasal Spray. You could choose Heineken solely because it's far and away Europe's favorite. And Europeans know their beer. Or you could choose Heineken because it's far and away America's number one imported beer. Americans know their beer too. Or you could open it and pour it and choose it for the best of all possible reasons. Heineken is the best beer in the world. Come to think of it, I'll have a Heineken. CBS Sports presents the 50th Cotton Bowl Classic. Live from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, it's the Auburn Tigers versus the Texas A&M Aggies. Sponsored by Today's Chevrolet, who invites you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in 86. And by Mr. Goodwrench. No one knows your GM car better than Mr. Goodwrench. No one. The spirit of Aggieland being played and the entire Texas A&M team facing over toward its student body, one of the many traditions at that school. confrontation between Texas A&M and Auburn. You know, there's another tradition at A&M. That's the 12th man to fill us in and a Happy New Year to our colleague, Jim Nance. Jim? All right, well, thank you very much, Brent. You know, the story of the 12th man actually started right here in Dallas in 1922 when a Texas A&M student by the name of E. King Gill was asked to come out of the stands at halftime in a game against Central College and suit up for the second half. It's out of respect for E. King Gill's loyalty and spirit for Texas A&M that the Aggie student body and most of their fans will stand up for the duration of all of their football games. We'll be seeing that today as well. Now, last year, Jackie Sherrill took the 12th man a step further when he asked the student body to try out for the kickoff coverage unit. Over 350 tried out last year, a couple, including a couple of women. 200 tried out this year. And today we'll see 11 non-scholarship athletes on the field when Texas A&M has their kickoff coverage unit on the field. Part of the tra a tradition here at Texas A&M. We're going to see it today. Let's go back upstairs. We're about ready to start. Here's Brent Musburger. All right, Jim, thank you very much. We'll have to wait for a time to see those non-scholarship students because Auburn won the flip and elected to defer. So Texas A&M said, we will take the ball, and Chris Johnson has it teed up for Auburn. Rod Harris is the deep man standing just inside the goal line for Jackie Sherrill and AM. What a gorgeous day here in Dallas, Texas. You could not order up a more perfect setting for a college football game. They'll down it for the touchback. It'll be first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at this offensive lineup. Kevin Murray, keep him in mind, number 14, he's going to be a good one. Anthony, Tony, and Roger Vick, they will operate at fullback. Era told you about them. Keith Woodside, breakaway speed. Harry Johnson, more of a slashing inside runner when he comes in. Jeff Nelson led the Southwestern Conference. And Shea Walker, he's a Freddie Bolitnikoff type receiver. First and 10, a and will alter its offensive sets. They will strike out of the eye on first down. Kevin Murray will throw it up. Incomplete. He wanted his tight end, Ron Burtonstein, number 29. Well, Errol, let's meet 
the offensive line. Where's the strength for Texas A&M? Well, Webb, the tight end, is a very fine football player. The left tackle, Cheek, strong, very strong player. Wiley, Wilson is an outstanding center. Dawson, and of course, Williams is really their all-American guy. He's an outstanding football player. Second and ten. The Aggies with a slot back, and instead, they will run the fullback right straight ahead, and Gerald Robinson of Auburn, number 95, took him on. Now, there is the War Eagle. One of the most frequently asked questions about Auburn, are they the Tigers, or are they the War Eagles? They are the Tigers, and they yell, War Eagle. In fact, when they get real riled up down there in Alabama, they'll yell, War Damn Eagle. It is third down and eight yards to go for Texas A&M. A bobble on the exchange, and Auburn has picked up the first turnover of this football game. An exchange fumble on third down by A&M. The first break of this Cotton Bowl era goes to Auburn. That's a big error, particularly early. I cannot tell whether or not Murray tried to pull out, but certainly the turnover could be very costly in this early going. Harold Hellman, the nose guard, pouncing on the ball near the 20-yard line. We'll get a look at Bo Jackson, number 34, for the first time. He'll come up behind Tommy Agee. He is the eye back. He is set about six yards behind this quarterback. Off the draw, Washington to throw on first down, and it's complete to A.G. Out of bounds at the 11-yard line. There was a good reason for that pass. The anticipation by Auburn that Texas A&M would be up to stop the run, stop Jackson. It was a great misdirection pass. A.G. was wide open. Watch A.G., the fullback, go into the right flat to fake to Jackson, pulls all the defenders, and he's wide open in the flat. That'll loosen up the defense. A great first play call. Asbury was the defensive back number 16 who took him out of bounds. Second and short, and they'll run that short man, A.G., and he powers right straight ahead against that A&M defense. And finally, Kip Coring to number 10 brings him down. Let's take a look at this offense for Auburn that is trying to take Pat Dye into the end zone. Washington is their quarterback. He began the season number three. A.G. just carried it. He's the fullback. Mr. Everything, Bo Jackson. Now, he is an H-back, Ron Middleton, or an extra tight end. Trey Gaines also returns punts. Freddie Wagan, red hair, just like Terry Beasley. Jeff Parks, 82, he'll be in the NFL, too. Now, Middleton, the H-back in motion. They like to run Jackson straight ahead, and he squeezes on in for the touchdown. Bo Jackson has done it for Auburn. Johnson to attempt the extra point. Kick is up, and it is Auburn 7, Texas A&M nothing. Take a look here from the side. Watch Jackson thrust into the end zone here. Really puts on the power, stretches over the line and gets the touchdown. A great start for Auburn, and not the way Texas A&M would have wanted to start, wanted to start it. Watch Tamborella, number 55, the center for Auburn. He moves over and helps out as they double-team the nose. Bo Jackson then cut back to his daylight, squeezed into the end zone. The fumble set up the touchdown, and only three plays, 21 yards, Auburn leads. It's your first child, we want to be there. It's your new house, we want to be there. You're working hard to make your dreams come true. Dean Witter wants to dream them with you. No matter what you do in life, Dean Witter will help you plan your investments like no one else's. Because you are like no one else. We'll talk about you, your needs, your goals. Whether it be for a retirement program, a tax savings plan, or managing your investments for the future. No matter who you are, no matter what you do, you're special to your family, you're important to us, it's true. Cause everybody is somebody, and Dean Witter. 
member of the Sears Financial Network. Tonight, a reluctant date with her boss could land Mary in the middle of a romantic triangle. Frank, you put out a daily newspaper. How could you not know what day it is? Oh. Bo Jackson, the Heisman Trophy winner, who has scored his team's first touchdown. He had a lot of help up front, Era. Yes, watch the right guard in the center, Tamborello, double up right here, and the fullback comes through and makes a great block on the linebacker. Take a look. You see A.G. come right through number 30 on 65, Kelm, throws the block, and there's that daylight that Jackson found. Now, I mentioned the weather here in Dallas this afternoon, and of course, for a football coach or a quarterback, the most critical element is the wind. And here this afternoon, there is a 5 to 10 mile an hour wind out of the west, so it is at the back of Chris Johnson. And that's why he took that first kickoff out of the end zone. Rod Harris, the wide receiver, is now set back at the goal line, and he moves over more toward the right hash. And another powerful kickoff, a touchback. AM second possession. They'll come up at the 20-yard line and put it in play. Trailing seven to nothing. Era, how does that affect the mood of this game? Auburn scoring quickly after a turnover. Well, it's not the way Texas AM obviously wanted to start. That kind of a turnover really puts a disadvantage. Although the opening series by Auburn's defense, I thought, was very, very good. Era, they have already switched running backs at AM. Roger Vick 43 comes in. Perry Johnson 21. He's over on a wing and now Johnson comes in motion. Here is Vick straight ahead behind the right side of that offensive line. Let's take a look at the Auburn defense era and how do they stack up up front? Well, it's very interesting about this defense as you go through here. Rocker, Coleman, and Williams, the two tackles and the nose man, are the three leading tacklers. Very unusual for a defensive team with a three down line and the leading tackler. Second and six against that defense. They pitch to fix. He busts one tackle and gets out near the 29. Harold Hellman, the nose guard, and Russ Carricker, the linebacker, doubled up on him. So it'll be third and short for AM. And the rest of that defense. Era, what about the deep backs for Auburn? Well, you see the character and Phelps are the two linebackers, and then their strong secondary man, of course. Powell, their free safety, but all of them respond well to the uh, run. No weak on pass defense in some instances. Third and two, and Murray throws high, incomplete. Harry Johnson was the intended receiver out of the backfield. Kevin Murray off to a bit of a shaky start, and Jackie Sherrill will attempt to calm him down. Well, it's not a good start for them. Here you see Murray right in the pocket. He gets excellent protection. Plenty of time to throw the ball. But he overshoots his receiver who was open and would have given him a first down and possession, continued possession of the ball. Todd Shantz is number four. You're looking from behind him. Deep for Auburn. Trey Gannis lets it bounce. It takes an a and roll. Down near the 25-yard line. It'll be down right there. First and ten for Bo Jackson and friends who lead in this Cotton Bowl, seven to nothing. We'll come back and take another look at the Heisman Trophy winner in just a moment. Apache. There's nothing hotter in the air or on the ground for technicians like crew chief Jack Holt. Because if you want to learn high-tech aviation skills, you can't find a better classroom. The Apache has advanced everything. Fiber optics, onboard computers, a TV for target acquisition, and the gunner can aim just by moving his head. Talk about hot. This bird can make tracks at 200 miles an hour. This is Lead Apache. Meet in Rally Point. Soaring to tomorrow. Flying high and free. Now I'm going places. I never thought. to the top by looking back you go for it with all the power you can muster all the confidence all the poise and you know that when you find 
finally make your move, you're going to go all the way. Cavalier, for people who know exactly where they're going. And now get 7.9% financing on new Chevy Cavaliers. The men in the trenches for Auburn, a big factor. To get more on that, let's go downstairs to Jim Nance. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Brent. After that first series, Auburn's offensive line coach, Neil Calloway, talked to his offensive lineman, asked each one of them to a man how they did in their matchup against the Aggie defensive line. They all felt very confident. They all said they handled their man rather easily, surprisingly easily. Of course, we know if some gaps could be opened up for Bo Jackson, it could be a very big afternoon for the Heisman Trophy winner. First and 10, Washington again to throw on first down under enormous pressure. He is sacked by John Roper, the linebacker taking him down. Nobody picks up Roper, he just comes in. You'll see him from the far side. It's a sprint out pass, a flood pass into an unbalanced line. You see Roper coming right here, throws his arms up and then grabs a hold of Washington. Someone missed an assignment in there at blocking. What was it? They said they were handling their men easily. <laughs> that wasn't right. very easy that time. Second and 21, that familiar eye formation for Auburn. And here comes Bo Jackson looking for daylight. And the two Aggies bring him down near the 20-yard line. The last two times out, formation-wise, Auburn was in an unbalanced line. They're taking the left tackle, Wallace, bringing him over, putting him beside Searles, their right tackle, so that they have three big men along with Middleton, number 87, when they put him in there. And they're going to try to create a power base there. Uh, the pass was off the same formation, but of course they did not block it. Third and 17, Washington has not been a consistent passer this year. Single setback, Washington under pressure, and he is brought down at the 16-yard line. And that was Ron Sadler, a defensive end, and he's a big-time player, number 99. He'll be a star in the NFL someday. Now a one-time walk-on at Auburn, Lewis Colbert, and an All-American punter, standing near his two-yard line. His first punt. Oh. Jimmy Hawkins going way back inside the 25-yard line. Trying to get outside and turn up field, and he steps out of bounds at the 27-yard line. So that's where Texas A&M will have possession. So in this 50th Cotton Bowl Classic, Auburn leads Texas A&M 7-0. We'll be right back. At the Wall Street Journal, we believe that building a dream takes more than luck and hard work. It takes a vision, a vision of what tomorrow holds today. At the Journal, we've been giving people that vision for over 90 years. The Wall Street Journal, the daily diary of the American dream. As loyal bud drinkers, we have over the years consumed 88,008 cans of the King of Beers. So when Old Style said it was better brewed than Bud, we were skeptical. Liars, I said. But we tried Old Style and found we had made 88,008 mistakes. We are now trying to make up for that. How are we doing, Curtis? That's 10 so far. Well, only 87,998 <laughs> more to go. Heilemann's Old Style, America's best brewed premium beer. Saturday, the Cowboys visit the Rams. Sunday, the Giants tackle the Big Bad Bears. The NFC Playoffs on CBS Sports. Lewis Colbert just showed us why he's an All-American. 61 yards. He's a very special story here today. And for that, let's go down to Jim Nance. Jim? Thank you, Brent. Lewis Colbert had to come overcome tremendous adversity. He was born with a club foot, had an operation before high school. Doctors told him not to play football, but he went out for his high school team anyway. Then he walked on at Auburn, still wanted to fulfill a lifelong dream of playing college football. His second year, Pat Dye gave him a scholarship after such a tremendous effort his freshman year at Auburn. Pat Dye told me this week it was the happiest, one of the happiest days of his coaching career, the day he gave Lewis Colbert a well-deserved scholarship here at Auburn. 61 yards, a good start for him. Let's go back upstairs with Brent. All right, Jim, thank you. The eyes of Kevin Murray. 
He now steps under the gun. Trailing by seven. He'll try to rally the Aggies. He pitches, and that is to Tony, who gets out at the 35-yard line. That was, check that, that was Keith Woodside, number 33. Let's take a look at Woodside. Now, he's one of their quicker backs as they continue to rotate. He has the ability to break one here this afternoon. Tony, 25, leading this play, and Woodside cuts off the block up inside where there was a seam. It'll be second and two for the Aggies. From the eye and the short man, Tony, goes right straight ahead, and he is met by linebacker Edward Phillips. Era, when you brought Notre Dame down here for those two Cotton Bowls, how was the weather? Well, we had uh, horrible weather the first game plant. It had rained. This was not a synthetic surface field. It was a natural grass field. They brought helicopters in and tried to beat the water off, and they put sawdust. It was not a good field. The second time we came back, we had a great field, the uh, artificial surface, and we had a fast field even though it was cold. Fast track today. Murray to throw again, right over the middle, complete to Bernstein, and the tight end who busts across midfield, down to the 47-yard line. That's a 16-yard gain, and the Aggies have got the offense rolling here for the first time. Now this is the multiple aspect of this Texas A&M team, tight end Bernstein. Right in there, they put four receivers out, the fifth goes on out from the fullback spot. The linebackers have dropped off, and you can see Bernstein wide open, Murray hits him. On first down, the handoff is to Tony. Eric, you mentioned that big right tackle, number 75, Doug Williams of the Aggies. He played at Moeller High School, then he went to Kentucky, and he transferred to College Station, and Williams is almost a certain number one draft choice by the NFL. When the Aggies need one, two, or three yards today, look for them to run up behind big number 75. Second down, in motion. Murray straight back quickly. Bernstein was open, but he can't get it off in time. Carriker comes through on the blitz from his linebacking spot. This is very unusual for the Auburn team. They don't do a whole lot of blitzing, but that time, character number 47, did a great job. Take it right from ground level. You see Murray coming back into the pocket. Watch character number 47 right there. Put the pressure on it as he blitzes from that weak linebacker spot. Great job by character. Era so far. The Auburn Tigers have made all the big plays in this game. And that is character's first sack of the year. Murray, he'll drop a slow pass, and it was not a well-thrown ball. He got the pass in front of Tony. He overled him. It was a perfect screen set up. Murray hit him. They had, a, had all the blockers out there. They had a good play set up, but Murray didn't quite get it to him. He has started one of four for 16 yards. And sometimes it is difficult for a quarterback to shake out of a bad start. It can make it an uphill battle all game long. Well, that sack really put him in a negative position. Chance punting for the second time. It's a low punt. Danis runs up and fumbles the ball. Texas A&M recovers. Monty J was downfield on that specialty team, and number 51 scooped it up, and the Aggies get a turnover. is one of the most consistent players. He comes up to try to field the ball. He didn't the last time. It's a tough catch. You see the ball hits his left knee, and he can't field it. It bounces forward. And, of course, this is a quick break for the A&M team. Kevin Murray asking for a little quiet. Hands off to Vick, who is back in the fullback. That's Roger Vick, who's 6'3", 218, only a junior out of Tomball, Texas. And Tracy Rocker brought him down for Auburn. See, the principle of the offense, as you see, they open it up one back in the back. If they deploy, Auburn deploys out to stop the pass. They'll give the ball to the fullback, and they try to get that four and five yards. If they keep the linebackers in there, then they go to their four and five receivers. It's a very tough attack to defend. Nelson in motion, and instead they will run right straight ahead with Vic again. Trying to wear down the middle. 
of that Auburn defense. Coming up this weekend, of course, a big one in the NFL, isn't it? The divisional playoffs, and on CBS, we will bring you the Dallas Cowboys out of Anaheim to play the Los Angeles Rams. We'll start at 3.30 Eastern time. And then on Sunday, it'll be the Giants and the Bears, 12 noon from Soldier Field. Third and three, Murray to put it up for the fifth time, complete. He hits Walker with a sideline pass for a first down, well-thrown ball. Well, the Auburn team was out of character that time. They went to a man-to-man -man coverage. They really were playing too far off their defenders. They put a blitz on by the linebackers. Watch the linebackers come. You see, they're almost a goal line defense. Here come the linebackers delayed. But the secondary is too far off. You can see right here, number 45, who is Jimmy Warren, is way too far off as you can see. Them. And that gives the Aggies a first down at the 15. Now they'll run pick straight ahead. He gets near the 10-yard line on first down. And Jackie Sherrill watching an era. That completion by Murray can do wonders for him because he was off to a shaky start throwing the ball. Well, you know, he came into the season with all, into this game with almost a 60% average. So, you know, somewhere along the line, he's going to start hitting them. Although quarterbacks can have bad days like everybody else. On second down. Again, he has Nelson in motion, and this time they pitch to Johnson. Johnson breaks free. Great second effort on into the end zone. Johnson out of Pasadena, California, grew up in the shadow of the Rose Bowl, and now he has scored a touchdown in the Cotton Bowl. This is Eric Franklin attempting the extra point. No good. A big miss. Auburn holds a one-point lead. Franklin shaking his head in disbelief. Now Harry Johnson is a six foot, 188 pound freshman. I mean, this is real effort. Look at the linemen up there. Let's see who misses. I can't quite see. Had a pretty good shot at him, and Johnson ran right on through for the touchdown. Great piece of running. Let's take one more look. Murray on the toss to Johnson. He slips into the seam. He should have been brought down by Powell. He couldn't get over in time to help out. And then breaking free, Johnson gets on in. And what happens when you score a touchdown and you're an Aggie fan? Well, there's the replay. That's tradition. Boy, if you go to Texas A&M, you got to hope your team scores about 50 a game, don't you? We'll be right back. Aggie. American business excel. Competition is what gives meaning to success. Competition is what drives Hilton to be America's business address. For over a hundred years, Metropolitan Life has been known for leadership in the field of life insurance. But there's a lot more to MetLife than that. Met is also health insurance, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and retirement plans. No matter what kind of insurance protection you need, all you have to remember is this face and the name Metropolitan Life. Get met. It pays. See America's top Grand Prix riders in a unique team competition at the Mercedes Horse Jumping Championship, Sunday on CBS Sports. We are back, and now we are going to show you one of those marvelous traditions at Texas A&M. Started only in 1983 by Jackie Sherrill, the 12th men. Outside of the kicker, you are looking at 10 non-scholarship athletes at Texas A&M. They come down only on kickoff coverage. 
Now, with the 12th man, you can see the enormous difference. No one has ever returned a kickoff for a touchdown against these non-scholarship students. The longest return is 29 yards, and there is an Auburn return man who is determined to do something about it. His name is Brent Fullwood. He's number 22. He's standing back at the two. The 12th man is ready to set sail again for Jackie Sheriff. And here they come. Fullwood lets it bounce on in the end zone, a touchback. And so the 12th man will not get to strut their stuff right now. It'll be first down on the 20-yard line. Era. What a simply grand tradition that was, but if you were a head coach and someone had suggested invite all the walk-ons at Notre Dame to come out and we'll use them for kickoff coverage, what would you have said? Why, absolutely. I would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't think of the idea. <laughs> in the Fiesta Bowl, over in Tempe, Nebraska leading Michigan 7-3. Yesterday was a bad day for the Big Ten, both Illinois and Michigan State beaten in bowl games. Reggie Ware now in at fullback and again on first down Washington looking to pass and again it's John Roper the linebacker who takes him down his second sack Auburn is trying to loosen up the Texas A&M defense but they cannot protect here comes Roper again this is just a sprint out looks like he wants to throw back but here's Roper taking the inside on a stunt brings Washington down and not a very good way to set up a passing attack so the third sack overall by the Eagles, second by Roper, Tommy Agee back in at fullback in front of Bo Jackson. It's Jackson, and they gain up on him, and there's a penalty marker thrown. Penalty marker is down. The line judge running forward, tossing it. Sammy O'Brien, the outstanding nose guard, held the middle. And Ben Tamborello, who is an outstanding center, All-American. You watch right here as he goes against O'Brien, who is 6'3", 244. He comes off the block, sliding down the line, and does a good job on him. He played an outstanding game against the University of Texas. Well, it was our first penalty of this Cotton Bowl game. The one thing you got to keep in mind in a ball game like this is when you've got a Bo Jackson, he can go anytime. He can break away anytime. He's that, that, that kind of speed. He can break tackles. Let's see what this call is. A face mask on the defense. Still second down. A face mask penalty by our officials who many of whom are out of the Big A conference here this afternoon in this Cotton Bowl. Our referee. Sam Maphis, the umpire is Bob Holliday, and it was Kent Hout who threw the flag that time, and the rest of our officials who are working here this afternoon. The play is in for Auburn, sent in from the sideline. Trey Gaines split wide to the bottom of your screen, not in your picture right now. And on this second down, Bo Jackson is short of the 25-yard line. And this weekend, Era will be live from Anaheim. Jimmy the Greek and Irv Cross will be there. We'll take a look at John Robinson's Rams. And, of course, we'll be checking both teams right up to kickoff. 3.30 Eastern time, Saturday afternoon from Anaheim. The Tigers pumped up, isn't he? Here is a third down for Washington and Auburn. Washington to throw. It was intended for Gaines incomplete. Domingo Bryant, number six, claiming that he got the ball. He is a big play defensive back. Let's take a look at Bryant. Domingo has got seven sacks, so he's really a great player. They're doing some stunning on the inside. Let's see what happens right at this. Looks like the ball was there, but Domingo thought he took it away from him. The ball must have hit the ground. Cannot see it from that angle. Colbert's second punt for Auburn. Remember, his first one was 61 yards. Hawkins fields it near the 30. And he is down at the 37-yard line. Sean Morris down to make the tackle. 
That was a 46-yard punt and a six-yard return. 7-6, Auburn leading, Texas A&M missing an extra point. Turnovers have set up both touchdowns here this afternoon in this Cotton Bowl. And Kevin Murray and the Aggies go back to work. And the running backs, Anthony Tony, 25, and Keith Woodside, 33. They have been shuttling backs. Tony is set behind Murray, who will throw on first down, right over the middle, complete to Bernstein. I did not expect to see the tight end featured this much for Texas A&M, and that was a gain of 22 yards. And I'm sure that's exactly what Auburn thought because they have not featured him, but you'll see the two linebackers run out, and right in the middle, Bernstein, right in the seam. Nobody there, and he turns and runs that ball right up the field. Great, great offensive play by Texas A&M. Nelson coming in motion, and they run Tony. 36-yard line up the middle. A multiple set offensive attack by Jackie Sherrill. Auburn's in a little bit of a dilemma now, I think, Brent, because they got burned in their man-to-man -man coverage and are not able to contain uh, Murray and the Texas A&M offense, passing game, I should say, in a pure zone. So they're going to have to do some other things, I think, with their linebackers. Second and four for Sherrill's Aggies. Nelson coming in motion, off the play fake. Murray looking for all of it, and Nelson, who trips down at the five. There is no interference called on the play. He simply got his feet tangled up. Kevin Porter had coverage for Auburn, number three. Kevin Porter did a fine job, an excellent job in his coverage that time. He was right on him, played the ball well. Take another look. This is Nelson coming down the right sideline. You'll see Murray loft that ball up just before he got hit. But you'll see Porter in beautiful position, excellent position. We take another look at it in era against the Longhorns. It was a shorter pass play, and Nelson made the catch for a touchdown. Murray comes back to Walker, complete inside the 25-yard line. A first down for the Aggies, and Thomas was there on the coverage for Auburn. Beautiful timing on that play, Brent. The ball was thrown by Murray just as Walker put a move upfield and then turned and came back, and the ball was right there, almost impossible to defend. Injured player on the field, and that is Harold Holman, their talented nose guard. That would be a blow to the middle of that Auburn defense right now. Now, let's talk for a minute about Kevin Murray. I know a lot of folks do not know that Murray was a minor league baseball player in the Milwaukee Brewers organization and you and I spoke to him yesterday about a young pitcher that he faced a couple of times, Dwight Gooden. What did he tell you about that experience? What was it he said? He says he came three times in a row, was it? <laughs> said my second time out, he struck me out three times and I became a quarterback quickly. <laughs> and there's another baseball player on the field, Bo Jackson. And I asked him his feelings about his last game for Auburn here today in the Cotton Bowl. I, I, well, I said, hey, this is my last game, and I'm just trying to go out with a big bang, whether I win or lose. It's my final college game playing for Auburn, and I just want to come out and have, have uh, fun to try to help my team win the full straight bowl game. You'll need help for the defense. Woodside is open. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Pressure is back on Bo Jackson. He'll need to get Auburn another touchdown, a 22-yard run. And Doug Williams, 75, made another big block for Jackie Sherrill. Side, number 33 right in the eye back position finding the daylight see Tony 
Woods makes a beautiful block right there on number 46, Phillips, the linebacker. And, of course, Woodside finds the daylight, does a nice job of running his second touchdown of the afternoon. Now the two-point attempt, and Kevin Murray knew that he overthrew this ball just a bit. This is one of the favorite patterns at AM. Run to the corner, and it's just a touch high. Nelson extending, and he can't quite get it. So they have missed both extra point opportunities here, and they will stand at 12-7, and we will get another look at the 12th man versus Brent Fullwood of Auburn. Again, 10 non-scholarship students, all of whom are out of the state of Texas, and they are riled up Aggie fans right now. key man to watch when they come downfield is Dennis Mudd, number four. His nickname on the far left is Maniac Mudd. Low kick. It'll be a short man at the 10. At the 20, there's a hole, and he gets out to the 33-yard line before Kyle Collins and Sean Morris... So Morse was bringing it back. And again, it was Danny Balker, number two, who tackled him. Bob bobbling around like this, throws off the timing, but you can see the crease opens up right there, and he pops through. A saving tackle right there. It's still a pretty good field position for Robin Tigers. Pat Dye telling us yesterday, I really want to bust one against the 12th man. He had an alley that time, didn't he? Here comes Bo Jackson on first down. One of the things that any defense has to watch out for against Bo Jackson is that ability to cut back if you over-pursue. If you are so diligent in trying to cut him off, he'll take you back the other way. Well, what happened there, Domingo, Domingo Bryant puts from that side and forced Jackson back to the inside. That's the, the defensive plan that they had. It didn't work well that time. Auburn has been held to 15 yards rushing so far. It is second down from the eye. Jackson, and he is stacked up right away. Nowhere to go, and again it is John Roper, the linebacker, number 83, who is playing an outstanding game here so far for the Aggies. Doing some stunning with Roper. The tackle will step outside, and Roper will come back inside as an outside linebacker, and they're causing confusion for the Auburn blockers. You see Pat Dye's concerned. Let's see what his offensive coaching staff comes up here. It is third and eight. Washington straight back with good protection, good time, and there's a penalty marker down. Trey Gaines was down at the 45-yard line, and there was a penalty marker thrown on the play. James Flowers was the defensive back working against Gaines. I think they're going to call interference. Hold it. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, no. I didn't see a tip. Ball was tipped. He was calling. I think he had the microphone on for a moment when he wanted yeah. it off, but then they got right. into a little bit of a discussion, and now they're calling everybody over here. They called pass interference, but the ball was tipped, and it makes it legal then. The ball was tipped. Disregard the flag. Good call, coach. Well, that's what happened on it. It was contact that was made. As the ball is tipped, then you're free access to the receivers. You can make contact. And you'll see right here, the ball is tipped. And then, of course, the receiver was hit just in the process right there. Era, the man who tipped it was Todd Howard. And Flowers was the man that made the contact with the receiver. Colbert to punt again. This will be his third punt. And we will have to wait for a time. Timeout has been called. There were only 10 Auburn players on the field. Now the 11th man, number 41, jogs on into his position. And I'm sure Coach Dye is going to have a word or two 
for whoever is the coach of the punt team because that cost them a vital first down. Texas A&M scoring its second touchdown in this game to take the 12-7 lead and watch Tony lead the way 25 and Woodside following in behind his devastating block then made the cutback and went the distance for the touchdown. A&M tried for two points and failed because they had missed an earlier kick but they lead Auburn 12 to 7. The Tigers scoring first in this game after a fumble by the Aggies at their own 20 yard line. Total yards era and it's really lopsided. It really is. Auburn with 12 yards. A&M with 121. And here is Colbert hunting for the third time for Coach Dodd. Hawkins will let this one go out of bounds. So Colbert wanted something a little bit straighter than what he got off that time. There is a flag down. That's what Colbert was pointing at. It is down near midfield. Now that is only a 35-yard punt. Well, it's holding on Texas a &M. Era, you and I have been in Dallas and to talk about the Cowboys and the Rams, what do you think about that matchup on Saturday? Well, it's going to be a very interesting game. I know that uh, a lot of the folks think that uh, Dallas has been a little inconsistent. You never know when they're going to play real well, but you can't discount that operation and Tom Landry. And then, of course, on Sunday, it's the Bears and the Giants, 1963, Wrigley Field, the last time they met in a playoff game in Chicago. Oh, it was cold that afternoon. I hope it's warmer up there this weekend. Can the Bears win that ball game? <laughs> <laughs> Just ask anybody from Chicago and they'll tell you. Jerry Fontenot is now in centering for Texas A&M. Johnson and Vick are the running backs, and this is Roger Vick muscling through on first down. After the penalty, the ball was put down at the 18-yard line on that first down, and then Vic ran it out just beyond the 23. Time remaining in our first quarter here, and this is the 50th Cotton Bowl Classic. Murray eyeing the Auburn defense. Hands off again to Vic. It's one of those offenses that can lull you to sleep running off tackle, off tackle, off tackle, and then Murray can hit you with about a 30-yard pass play. Well, Jackie Sherrill brought in Lynn Amity, uh, who was the architect of the Vanderbilt offense. They did a lot of things. Oh, we've got an injury down here. Auburn player is down. Williams is down for Auburn. Well, he is, uh, he's their best down lineman, Gerald Williams. Being tended to there by the trainers. So we're coming to the end of the first quarter. Pat Dye and the Auburn Tigers scoring first, but they're trailing. And there have been so many great moments down here in the... 50 years of Cotton Bowl history, and of course, no one is better equipped to tell that story than Lindsey Nelson. And Lindsey will be here at halftime, and we'll take a look at the Cotton Bowl's pass. First down on that run, the short man, it is Vic, and he is met at the point of attack. Tracy Rocker, number 74, was the first Auburn Tiger to get a lick at it. Here is some of the contact that we're seeing right here. A little of that hand-to-hand -hand warfare, if you will, that goes on between blocker and defender trying to get free. It was Andre Bruce, number 93, who was a freshman. But Pat Dyes is really high on him. He thinks he's going to be a fine player. Come to the end of the first quarter. 
12-7, Texas A&M. We'll return after this commercial and a word from your local station. Minwax makes wood beautiful. Minwax brings out wood's rich, warm glow, so it's as beautiful to look at as it is to touch. Wood finish by Minwax penetrates deep into wood, so it's easy to get outstanding results. And when topped with our own polyurethane, Minwax protects against life's hard knocks and tough spills, letting wood's natural beauty show through. Minwax makes wood beautiful. When you send a package to Europe, do you get that sinking feeling that it could be anywhere? Here, there, out of your hands, lost? Well now, Federal Express is going to Europe. We'll make sending a package there as easy and reliable as it is here. Two-day service to London, Frankfurt, Zurich, Brussels, Amsterdam, and Paris. On our own planes. Now that you know Federal Express is going to Europe, why fool around with anyone else? This is CBS. It's a year-end closeout sale, and your Houston area Nissan dealers are bumper to bumper with the best car and truck buys of the year. We've got a huge inventory of Nissan sport trucks, king cabs, and 4x4s in stock and on sale now. So walk, run, or climb to your Houston area Nissan dealers today, because even a closeout sale has to come to a close. Music. Kickers love the music on Kick 96 FM. Now Kick is playing even more back-to-back -back country favorites. Other stations promise lots of music but play only one or two songs, then more talk. At Kick, you always get back-to-back -back songs all the time. That's a promise from Kick 96 FM. Only the lonely Kick 96 FM, your official country station. Happy New Year from Channel 11. Texas A&M leading after one quarter, 12-7. And the Aggies made some headlines off the field a little bit earlier. And for that story, let's get out of Jim Nance. Brent, it's been kind of a rough year, actually, for the Southwest Conference when it comes to being placed on probation. And in the last month, there have been allegations in a Dallas newspaper, plus one Dallas television station, about uh, irregularities in the, in the Texas A&M recruiting. But Jackie Sherrill, before this game, was concerned how this might affect his players. He told them not to worry about this, do not talk to the media about it. I will handle it. I talked to several players. They said, actually, it's been a very positive thing for them. It's helped bond them together, made them a closer unit, and that was very evident here in the first quarter. Let's go back upstairs. All right, Jim, and at halftime, I will ask Coach Sherrill if they pay football players at Texas A&M. That's coming up at halftime. We start the second quarter. It is second and ten. Kevin Murray off a play fake, drops straight back, complete again to Bernstein, the tight end. Era again, Murray is finding his tight end underneath. Well, he's continuing on with his season average. He's had a great year. He's the key figure in that offense. But again, I want to say something about Lynn Amity, who has really been the architect of this offensive football team, and they really are explosive. Not so explosive in the first quarter. They run Vic right straight ahead, and he busts across midfield. Gerald Robinson and Tom Powell making the tackle. Got Auburn completely off balance. They don't know whether to play the pass or the run. They're doing a great job. Watch the left guard. You see him come right behind it. Right there, great block right there on Robinson, number 95, by Randy Wild. And Vic, again up the middle, this time inside the 40-yard line. Gerald Williams, who was not seriously injured, fortunately, making the stop for Auburn. Charles Aggies have been dominating this game ever since an early turnover. And on that scoring drive for Auburn, they completed their only pass, and it was their first offensive play of the game. They have been shut down ever since. 
And another first down for Texas A&M. Playing in its first Cotton Bowl since 1968. And Pat Dye and Auburn playing in their first Cotton Bowl. Nebraska beating Michigan 14 to 3. That's somewhat surprising against that Michigan defense that we saw a year long ago. It really is, but Bo has had trouble in bowl games. First down, Murray back. Under pressure. Now he'll keep it. And he's safe at second base there at the 35-yard line. <laughs> Very wisely gets down to the turf. Wants to come back to throw some more passes. Cheryl will have him back next season, too. He broke his ankle last year in a game against Arkansas State. He was redshirted and very despondent. He did some rehabilitation work at the Dallas Cowboys training facility. Right out of Dallas here. Second down, Green Harris in motion. On the pitch, it's Harry Johnson. Driven out of bounds, short of the 30-yard line. Edward Phillips, 46, was the defensive player who got him out. Well, after a shaky start era, there is no question but that Kevin Murray possesses a great deal of skill. They've looked like a machine on the last two, two drives that they've had. Really got Auburn off balance. Auburn needs a big play somewhere along the line. This third down play. Complete. And it's a first down and you know who. Rod Bernstein, the tight end. They tried to blitz again. Single coverage. Powell could not stay with him. The free safety of Auburn. And you'll see it right here as he cuts across right in front of the screen. Murray comes back. Watch Powell, number nine, trying to stay with him, and he can't. And Bernstein's got the lead. He shakes both tacklers, and 45, Jimmy Warren finally gets him down. Four catches for 63 yards for Bernstein, handing off to Tony, who has checked in. Pat Thomas, number 41, with the tackle for Auburn. When you play in Auburn, Alabama, or College Station, Texas, and you start the season late August, early September, you need a lot of players, especially at that running back position. And Texas A&M will alternate up to six running backs against Auburn here this afternoon. Texas A&M coaches, the offensive coaches, were telling me they feel that they can get six yards passing virtually any time. From the coach's perspective. And a cutback by Johnson. And another Johnson, this one Arthur, number 40. And on the tackle for Pat Dye and Auburn. He is the strong safety in that secondary, and this defense has been under a great deal of pressure from the Aggies here. Let's see what Auburn decides to do defensively on this play. I think they should just go right on goal line defense. They're having trouble stopping them. Third down, they need to stop them some way. It's third and four, and they'd love to force a field goal attempt here if they can. And they will run, and they've stopped them short of that first down. Johnson not getting it. Gerald Williams, 98, and also Benji Rowland, number 96. He's going to go with the field goal. He wants that 15th point on the board if he can get it because it requires three scores, or if you want to go for a two-point play, it would require two two-point plays. Franklin missed an extra point at the opposite end earlier in the game. Now he has that 10 mile an hour wind at his back attempting this field goal. He's at the left hash mark. He's only 15 for 27 on field goals. He missed a couple of chip shots in one of the key games, the SMU game. Missing again, again, a 25 yarder. the life of a field goal specialist. He's had a tough year. His brother, meanwhile, coming off that record tying performance with the New England Patriots last week against the New York Jets, and now the younger Franklin having difficulty here in the Cotton Bowl. We'll be right back. There's always paperwork when you buy a house. This pretty much says that nobody's got a gun to your head, but you're entering this agreement freely. The next says the property's insured for the amount of the note, and you sign that in the lower left corner. The next says the house is free of termites. 
I hope you brought your checkbook. This is the fun part. I say that all the time, though most people don't think so. <laughs> You could choose Heineken solely because it's far and away Europe's favorite, and Europeans know their beer. Or you could choose Heineken because it's far and away America's number one imported beer. Americans know their beer too. Or you could open it, and pour it, and choose it for the best of all possible reasons. Heineken is the best beer in the world. Come to think of it, I'll have a Heineken. Georgetown and St. John's will renew their heated Big East rivalry. Then see Notre Dame take on DePaul or USC against Washington January 11th on CBS Sports. Well, to get a perspective on Eric Franklin's kicking problems, let's go down to Jim Nance, Jim. Well, Brent, I talked to Eric Franklin yesterday at practice. He says he has not been kicking the football very well since a couple of days after the Texas game. In fact, he's talked to his brother Tony about the mechanics. Tony says everything looks okay. Now, I also talked to Franklin before the game today, and he still said it wasn't doing any much any better. So, so far, a mixed extra point and a field goal for Eric Franklin. Let's go back upstairs. Tough, emotional moment for a young man. It's 12-7. The Aggies have the lead. Bo Jackson and Auburn coming back to work. They have thrown a lot on first down. Let's see if they get out of that pattern. This time, they toss the ball to Jackson. He slips outside, turns, and gets to the 27-yard line. And Larry Kelm, 65, the leading tackler, was one of the first Aggies to hit him there. That was that formation where they bring Wallace over with Searles, the two tackles to, to, to the right. And then they use Middleton, who is really a tight end, as the flanker back, and they tried to run off that tackle. Domingo Bryant was blitzing on the left side, and Jackson actually ran outside of him. Reggie Ware, 36, in at fullback behind Washington. They hand to Ware. He's a powerful young man, getting close to the first down. Sammy O'Brien, the nose guard number 90 who just simply dominated the middle against the Texas Longhorns in that game that the Aggies had to win, comes up with that big stop. The difference is offensively. The Aggies have dominated. And you know, when you think about bowl games, Era, I've always noticed that the team that can pass really gets the upper hand in a bowl game. Well, as we pointed out at the top of the telecast, that the balance of the Texas team their ability to run and pass equally well was certainly an advantage. Only the second first down for Auburn in this game. Washington to throw again on first down, has time, couldn't get an open receiver. Now he's on the move and he's down at the 32-yard line. And Johnny Holland, number 11, the All-American linebacker, was giving pursuit over there on that side. That's the first time that we have called his name here this afternoon. And he's a good one. You can see him checking over at the sideline. He'll take the defensive call from the Aggie bench, and then he will pass it on in the huddle. There was only one poster up over in the A&M locker room in College Station, Texas, when I visited, and that was a poster of one Bo Jackson, who was stripped down to his football pants and ready to go to work, and Johnny Holland said, boy, I wish I had a body like that. <laughs> Second down and eight. Washington is sacked and taken down by Jay Muller. That's the fourth sack by the Aggies of Washington here this afternoon. They just are trying to establish a passing game, but they cannot get the protection, and Pat Washington is hesitant. He's afraid to throw the ball. He's afraid he's going to throw an interception. Of course, he hasn't, didn't have a whole lot of time there, but they just are having a great deal of difficulty trying to establish a passing game third and 13 so you would expect them to try again against that waiting and tough Jackie Sherrill defense Washington right straight back blitz by Bryant they drop it off to Bo Jackson 35 40 45 50 here he comes 40 35 they won't catch him forget it Bo Jackson for the touchdown You have 
just seen why he's number one. You have just seen why he won the Heisman Trophy. And you have just seen why NFL scouts are drooling all across the land. 73 yards on a pass from Washington. Auburn will go for two. Stop short. That was Brent Fullwood, 22, carrying the ball into the heart of that Aggie defense. Era, you and I spoke about the Auburn attack all week long. We said the one thing they should do is drop the pass to Bo Jackson. He's such a great receiver, a great baseball player. Exactly what they do here is fifth reception of the year, and he goes 73 yards with it. Once he gets into the open, there's no one that can catch Bo Jackson. 4.12 in the 40. You can see no one in sight. Great play, and that's as Brent you pointed out, is why he is the Heisman Trophy winner. And everybody wants him in professional football. He will also play baseball for Auburn as a senior. He has been drafted by the New York Yankees and later by the California Angels. The Angels offering him a quarter of a million dollars. Baseball will have to wait, however. The NFL scouts are after him, too. Napa means auto parts. So dependable, they may be the best part of your car. More than 100,000 parts for import and domestic vehicles are available through over 6,500 Napa stores all across the country. Or get Napa quality at garages and service outlets where you see the Napa sign. Wherever you go, Napa's the one. All the right parts in all the right places. Your resume is fine, but the interview's on the line, cause... I feel a cold sore coming on. Campofanique Cold Sore Gel works on developing cold sores to help speed healing. Campofanique Gel helps stop cold sores from stopping you. Dad, my nose is stuffy. Oh, you caught my cold. <sighs> Neosinephrine cleared up my nose right away. See? And there's neosinephrine for your nose, too. Neosinephrine. Nothing's faster or more effective. It lets you breathe a lot easier. Come on along, I'll take you to the lullaby of Broadway. Hickory and Ballyhoo, the lullaby of Broadway. And in the center of it all is the Milford Plaza. Stay at the Milford Plaza Hotel with cocktail dinner and breakfast for $43 per person. Discover why we are the lullaby of Broadway. The Milford Plaza is the lullaby of all Broadway. If somebody is having an off night, take charge. We lose too many lives when fans drink and drive. So have your friend pass the keys. It's the biggest assist he can make. Chris Johnson with the ball teed up in Auburn leading Texas A&M by a point. 8.28 to go. First half, the 50th annual Cotton Bowl Classic from Dallas, Texas. Harris fielding the ball about a yard deep. And he is short of the 15-yard line. Bo Jackson's touchdown ignites the special league team. You know, a lot of folks have asked me, why is he named Bo? Well, let's find out. Let's go back downstairs to Jimmy. Well, Brent, his real name is Vincent Edward Jackson. But you see, when he was in the sixth grade, his friend said that he was as mean as a boar hog. Eventually, the hog was dropped and boar was shortened to Bo. That's how you got Bo Jackson. One thing's for sure, you can call him Bo or you can call him Vincent. But he's one incredible athlete, Mr. Jackson. He's made one name for himself. Let's go back upstairs. All right, Jeff, thank you. Now it is the Aggies turn it back. Kevin Murray pulling out on first down. Complete at the 30-yard line. He hits Shea Walker. Boy, he hummed that one in there. Murray put some zip on that ball. Well, Mr. Jackson has seized the spotlight away from young Mr. Murray. And now our other baseball player is coming back. setback. That's Roger Pick. Coming out near the 33-yard line. 
Well, let's reset the scene here in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. You can see there's a penalty flag down there, and they will show us the holding sign. It is the Auburn Tigers. And they like that penalty going against Texas A&M at this moment. Bo Jackson scored his first touchdown on a five-yard run. It was 7-0 after the extra point. Texas A&M scored, and it was Johnson from 11 yards out. They missed the extra point kick. But then they took the lead as Woodside ran 22 yards. They went for two points, and that failed. It was 12-7. And moments ago, Washington dumping one off to Jackson, who took it 73 yards for the touchdown. Auburn went for two. They missed, and we're sitting on a one-point Cotton Bowl, 13-12. 7.56 to go with Nebraska leading Michigan at the half in the Fiesta Bowl, 14-3. Now after the penalty, they'll run the draw play with Vic, and he busts one tackle, but not two more. The first man to hit him was Brian Smith. He slowed him up enough, and then help came from his friends. Texas A&M has the kind of football team that can overcome penalties like this. It's not easily done, obviously, but Murray has the arm. They have the first little attack to be able to do so, and they have two more downs to try to get it done. This is second and 21 for Murray and the Aggies. Murray is 7 of 11 for 104 yards. Here's his 12th pass. Bobble and the receiver go back for the ball to hold on was Tony Thompson number 80. That's a 19 yard gain. Thompson's just a freshman. You see it from the end zone. Murray in the pocket. Watch him move around. Not only does he have a great arm, he's able to scramble and he sees well. There's the ball right there to Thompson. He bobbles it momentarily, gathers it back. Nice job by Thompson. And you can see they have third and short. Well, they got 19 of those 21 with that pass. Single setback. Murray to throw. He wanted Nelson, and it's incomplete. Threw it into the ground. Down. I think he threw it into the ground. He was open. He was trying to get Nelson, but it looked like Murray got the ball on a too low trajectory. Murray and the offense leave, and punter Todd Shantz on the field for the Aggies. Now, Trey Gaines is set to return. He fumbled a punt, which led to an Aggie touchdown. And this one he has at the 11, but he can't get anywhere. Alex Morris, number 30, who has been very visible on those specialty teams, comes down to make the stop. So we'll come back with Auburn leading Texas A&M by a point. 6.26 to go in the first half. Every day we face a simple truth. The world is getting more and more complex. Technology from a company called TRW helps find patterns in complexity. It gives us perspective. So when we look at the world, it's a little simpler to understand. Tomorrow is taking shape at a company called TRW. Whether you want performance or style, you can find it in more in America's best-selling mid-size car. Celebrity. Move into more. Move into Chevrolet Celebrity. Drive today's Chevy. Live today's Chevy. Celebrity. Chevy announces 7.9% financing on new Chevy Cavaliers, Novas, and four-cylinder celebrities. Save up to $1,340 on Chevy Celebrities. $1,210 on Chevy Nova. $1,260 on Cavalier. See your Chevy dealer. Ten years she was a prisoner of war. Ten years is a long time. Are you in love with her? Maybe too long. Intimate Strangers, tonight at 9. When Bo Jackson takes a break, there's a tendency to relax. But Brent Fullwood is a very capable tailback. You can see what he's accomplished filling in for Jackson. Remember that Bo has missed playing time because of injuries. He played that entire Alabama game with a couple of broken ribs. Told us yesterday that he is fine for this Cotton Bowl. And after that 73-yard touchdown, he'll sit out a series. Where is the fullback? And he runs right straight ahead and powers his way out to the 20-yard line. 
Now, both Ware and Fullwood are back for Coach Dye next season. However, Coach Dye will make a change with his offensive coordinator. It is a story that is known well around Auburn. And one of the men who may be added to Pat Dye's staff as a quarterback coach is up here working on the radio network for Auburn, another Heisman Trophy winner, Pat Sullivan. Second down for Washington, who hangs off the forward. Forward, running away from his blockers, gets to the corner on the outside, and Holland was in pursuit of him over there. Coach is not too happy over there on the sideline, Era. Well, I, I imagine he would like to maintain possession of that ball. He wanted a little bit of blocking on that side. He's got third down and short. The best way to stop the Texas A&M offense, which the Auburn Tigers have had difficulty with, is to maintain possession of the ball himself. Well, he's taking Fullwood out, and I think he wants to talk to him. I felt that Fullwood ran away from his blocker that time and that there was something inside. Dye is speaking to him, and that means for the power eye, Bo Jackson is back in the field. They toss to Jackson. Jackson squeezes for what appears to be the first down. Todd Howard, 73 over there to bring him down. Good patience that time by Bo Jackson. He waited for the little blocking open. You'll see it here, right from the end zone. He's very patient here. He waits. Now when he finally sees it, he's going to be tackled. He thrusts forward and does a nice job on it. 73, Todd Howard is the man that brought him down. And he goes back out after getting Dye what he wanted, the first down. How the Heisman Trophy winner is doing. Fullwood is back in as the eye back. Ware is the fullback. And again, it is Ware into the middle of that Aggie defense. Out close to the 30. Dye obviously trying to take some time off that clock right now. They are down toward 520 here in the first half. You know, it's interesting that that touchdown pass that Jackson ran was only the second touchdown pass in the last 34 quarters of Auburn. So they, they just haven't had that many touchdowns through the air. The Aggie defense waited. Middleton, the H-back, comes in motion. Washington toss, forward, can't find a handle, has it on the hop, and Domingo Bryant, number six, is up to bring him down. Well, just when I brag on forward, he dribbles <laughs> one for me and can't find his blocker. Well, he got a favorable bounce for it to come right back, otherwise he could have been in real trouble. That Bryant is one of the big play defensive backs in college football this year. And also, very good job of defense on the option. This is the first option play that Auburn has run. The ball was thrown a little bit high, but you see the ball came right back to him. Excellent job of defense. Domingo Bryant, a great, strong safety, does a nice job. Boy, they're doing a good job of blocking on Holland, aren't they? On third down, Washington overthrows the intended target that time. Freddie Wagan, way over his head. Before this game is over, I got to have Bo Jackson throw the ball. <laughs> you know, but I want to double back on my thought. Johnny Holland, who has not been obvious. Now, the Auburn offense is certainly aware of him. And did you see him come back that time? Middleton, the tight end, he's going to go in about the second or third round of the NFL draft. Now, Colbert to punt again. Gets one high. And m will let it bounce dead. Down at the 39-yard line. We got a 13-12 Cotton Bowl. Four minutes first half. We'll be right back. Begin with raw steel. Shape it with fire, muscle, and sweat. Polish it to razor sharp perfection. We're looking for a few good men with a medal to be Marines. You know, I've been a beer drinker for a bunch of years. Like you, I've seen a lot of beer commercials. There's one beer that people loved before it was even advertised. You see, Coors was kind of the beer at my folks' place. People thought it was different, special. And that was true long before there were any jingles or promotions. It's the product people love, not the hoopla. You think about that. How many products can you say that about? Coors is the one. 
Texas A&M will have possession at the 40-yard line. The Aggies this year 9-2. and two. Their two losses were both on the road to Alabama and Baylor. As a matter of fact, some of those Alabama folks say, hey, we've already won the Cotton Bowl. We beat Texas A&M early and Auburn late. Alabama coming through with a good second half to win the Aloha Bowl. But, boy, did you see that game? How many can you have in the first half, huh? First down now. Murray back to throw it for the Aggies. Drills one to the sideline. It's complete to Rod Harris, number 17. Another fine throw by Murray. Really impressed when he throws that sideline route and he has to get there, get it there in a hurry because the coverage is tight. He just drills it in there. 17-yard gain for Murray, who is 9 of 14 for 136 yards in the first half of this Cotton Bowl. And Harris, who is out of the Dallas, Texas area, working that sideline pattern. Is Anthony Tony. Battles his way inside the 45-yard line. Gerald Robinson, 95 of Auburn. In there to help out and bring him down. He's a fine defensive player, Robinson is. All conference in the Southeastern Conference and really high on him. Well, when I visited Auburn, it was a couple of weeks after the Alabama loss. Boy, did they take that loss tough down there. Oh, that, you know, that traditional rivalry down there. That was really Murray is back, quick pass deflected. The Rushman getting to it that time and knocking it incomplete. Now it'll be third down for Texas A&M. When you think about it, after looking several times at the videotape of that Alabama game, if you're an Auburn fan, you have every right to think you had it won when you were inside of 50 minutes and you had Mike Shula and Ray Perkins in difficulty back there. Murray calling a timeout as he comes out of the huddle. 312 to go here in the first half. And Murray will come over and confer with Jackie Sherrill. So Texas A&M is located in College Station, Texas, and let's take a look at this Southwest Conference School campus. 150 years after its founding, frontiers are still being explored in the Lone Star State and certainly at Texas A&M. For students and teachers, frontiers are those of the mind, like the universe, constantly expanding. For researchers, new horizons are searched on land in finding better ways to feed a hungry world. Beneath the sea and secrets guarded by centuries. And beyond our planet, probing mysteries not yet gleaned. At Texas A&M, a new frontier simply means a new idea. Auburn University. Students who come here have a strong desire for a learning experience that will prepare them for a meaningful career. There's an atmosphere here that promotes new ideas and creative thinking. A college education begins with a strong faculty and a bright group of students. And Auburn professors take the time to give their students the attention they need to develop their minds. So that those who leave are better prepared to adapt to an ever-changing world, or perhaps even to change it. So we have seen both campuses, and there is a certain similarity to the two schools. Auburn, living for many years in the shadow of Alabama, and Texas A&M having to put up with Texas. And now both schools are starting to emerge into their own here in the last decade. It's third down, 3-12 to go, first half. Murray throws one quickly, Thompson intercepted. Coming over is Jimmy Warren, 45 to pick it off. This is one of the, this is one of the few times that Tom Powell, a free safety, number nine, right there. Watch him blitz on this. And of course, Jimmy Warren does a great job. Murray reacts beautifully. He's got wall on one coverage. From up here, it looked like he had the lead, but the ball was slightly underthrown. A great job by Jimmy Warren reacting to the ball while it was in the air. Well, the blocking pattern, not expecting Powell to come, they leave the alley open. And Murray, seeing number nine, pressuring him, threw quickly. And there, as you pointed out, it was underthrown and intercepted by Warren. And now Pat Dye and Auburn, they will have a chance with 3.06 to go in leading at the half or perhaps even add to it. It's 13-12, Auburn over Texas A&M. Bo Jackson 
Getting to the 19-yard line, Wayne Asbury, 16 from that Aggie secondary, bringing the Heisman Trophy winner down. Brent with uh, 250 left to go, I think I would try to get that ball back in Bo's hands on a pass, a screen, or some kind of play like they had, because once he gets out in the open, the offensive line of Auburn is not establishing and controlling the Texas A&M defense. Texas is doing a good job. Washington to throw. Incomplete. James Flowers, 15, was covering to Freddie Wagan. Oh, we're 225 away from half, and we're coming up. We'll visit with Lindsey Nelson, and he'll take you through the history of this great bowl game. And we'll meet the Chevrolet coach and players of the year. And, of course, we'll have some of the halftime pageantry here from Dallas. Could not ask for a better day, weather oh, conditions beautiful. for a Just football game. Beautiful. Third and eight. One setback, it's Bo. He slips out as a receiver, but Washington looking the other way. Throws incomplete, over through Wagan, and out of bounds. I tell you, Aaron, I gotta have Bo Jackson throw the ball. I think you're right, absolutely right. Either that or have Washington throw him the ball. Colbert to punt. Well, he got off one of his weak punts last time of only 30 yards. He's been sort of progressively coming back after that 61-yarder to open this cotton ball. He'll hit this one near the 10. Oh, there's a better one. Hawkins, 34. And they force him into the middle, not letting him get outside containment time. A 46-yard punt and only a six-yard return. Plenty of time, Coach, for AM. Two minutes and eight seconds. That's plenty of time for Murray. Murray coming on into the huddle. His tight end has been his favorite target so far, number 29, Rod Bernstein, but he also has capable receivers and Jeff Nelson, who led the Southwest Conference in receptions. He's been deadly on this down. Should have been handled. Incomplete. Looked like he might have thrown that one a little too hard. He had, didn't have much distance between himself and the receiver. and looked like he really unloaded it. That was Woodside, coach, who scored a touchdown on that one running play who came out of the wing spot. Second and ten. Ball is at the Aggie 34-yard line. One setback is Vic. This is complete again to Bernstein, the tight end. Short of a first down. It'll be a third down play coming up. Now warming up is the other kicker. That is Scott Slater of Texas A&M. It is possible that if they get close, Jackie Sherrill will attempt to use Slater. Murray's pass complete for the first down. Woodside, and he gets... Inside the 20-yard line, down to the 12. Tom Powell finally brought him down. They did not converge well in that secondary. Well, I, it looked like he was trapped on the inside, and the linebackers were going to get him, but he escaped from him. And, of course, the secondary people had to recover. They were in the two deep. Let's take another look at it here. Murray slides outside the pocket to the left, and he drills it right in. You can see number 47, Carriker, thought he was going to knock it off. And 93, Andre Bruce misses him. And then, of course, the secondary people, you see Warren coming over and number three, Porter. Finally, nine, the free safety, Tom Powell gets him down. And Woodside, the sophomore from Louisiana, having a big game. He's in at the tail, on the pitch to him. He comes, and he is met there on the short side and run out of bounds at the 10-yard line. A minute and four seconds remaining in the first half. AM trailing Auburn by a point in this Cotton Bowl, 13-12. The Aggies can get a first down inside the three-yard line. But with a minute to go, of course, they're thinking touchdown right now. A field goal, however, would put them ahead. Johnson checks in. The throw is come out of bounds. Incomplete. Shea Walker. And he is
is arguing that he was pushed out of bounds as he made the catch. Warren did a nice job again. Jimmy Warren, number 45, on the sideline. Got enough contact on him to get him out of bounds. Uh, here is Warren. Murray drilling the pass to Walker. Walker going up. And Warren getting right at him to make sure. At least make it tough on the official. Make him make the call, right, Cut? <laughs> ah, he was out of bounds. Good Third ball. and eight. Kevin Murray not liking what he was seeing down there. And he will call timeout. And he'll come on over here and confer with the coaching staff. Meanwhile, let's us take a listen and see this message from the NCAA. I was a dropout, but for the love of athletics, I re-entered high school and went on to college. And I believe that my experiences as a youngster and my desire to achieve something in my life made me a very good student when I went back to high school and on to college and got my degree. If it wasn't for that, I don't think I would have been successful as a tennis champion. I wanted to be a tennis player and it seemed like the only way that I could do that was to get my education. And I like to encourage all youngsters who may be thinking or entertaining the idea now of, oh, why go to school? What is there for me? That is very important, that education. If you don't get that education, you'll never become anybody and you won't be anybody. This message furnished by the NCAA. Harold, let's take one more look at that pass. You can see the ball is deflected right there by number 41, Thomas, but he still is, the ball is caught by Walker right there. He was knocked out of bounds. He wasn't even close to being in bounds. Well, I don't know if they have a short pattern for Bernstein, but he has certainly been a dangerous receiver for Murray. This is third down. The ball is at the 10-yard line. Bernstein trying to get free. They throw it back to Nelson, who can't get it. It was crossing underneath the tight end that time. It'll be fourth down, and AM will attempt a field goal with Scott Slater. He'll be the second kicker that they will have used this half. Watch Nelson in motion here, and he cuts clear across. He's wide open. The defenders run into one another, which he wanted to have happen, but the ball is thrown slightly behind him by Kevin Murray. Otherwise, it would have been a score. A 26-yard attempt by Slater. Kick is on its way, and Slater puts AM ahead. The sophomore from Fort Worth, Texas, gets an opportunity, and another barefooted kicker has given Texas A&M the lead with 50 seconds to go here in the first half. It is 15-13. The Aggies, and now again we'll get to see the 12th man, those 10 non-scholarship students waving the towels and getting ready to come downfield for the Aggies. The Yale leader. Getting the student body whipped up. No one has ever returned a kickoff more than 29 yards against this group. And Slater will kick it off. Touchback. Errol, when we think about Auburn's offense, it is very difficult for them to strike 80 yards because they are not equipped with the kind of a passing game to work against the clock right now. Well, basically, the drives they put on against Alabama, and for most of the year, as evidenced by the fact they only have two touchdown passes, the one that Bo just ran was their third uh, by uh, Washington. 
and they generally grind it out possession football and I really think that's what they're going to have to do in the second half maintain possession to keep it away if they possibly can Jeff Berger number 12 stepping into your picture is the new quarterback he's the sophomore from Cedar Town Georgia off to the fullback and Reggie Ware straight ahead with time running down here they get it down to 40 seconds Washington leaves having completed two of seven passes for Pat Dye Dye wanting the messenger service to hurry up a little bit and get the play in from the sideline lawyer Tillman a fleet freshman checks in and you would have to think that they are setting the stage here to go long in his direction if they can. Berger is back. Waits. Throws down the left. And it is complete at the 45-yard line. Eight seconds left on the clock. Wagan, the intended receiver, a 31-yard gain. Era, do they have enough time to run a play and get the field goal unit on the field? Well, it's going to be really close for that eight seconds. He'd have to run an out pattern um, probably at the 35-yard line, which would be about 11-yard gain to kill the clock. That pass was thrown very well. Wagan got in between the zone defenders, and let's take a look at Freddie Wagan, who reminds some of Terry Beasley simply because he has the same colored hair right flaming red number 14 going up concentrating and making a good catch against the Aggies Kip Corrington that time the safety man number 10 sort of got off balance with a step that he took he was in good position but got out of balance No oh, reminder, of course, we've got the Cowboys and the Rams Saturday afternoon. We'll start our coverage with the NFL today at 3.30 Eastern Time, live from Anaheim Stadium. Then on Sunday, we'll take the entourage into Soldier Field, Giants and the Bears. The NFL today will be live from Chicago, 12 noon Eastern Time. Berger, the quarterback. Middleton, the motion man. They pitch to Jackson. He steps outside near the 40-yard line with three seconds showing on that clock. Well, they're going to give it a try, I think. No, I guess not. Colbert, no, I guess they're going to give it a try. Chris Johnson will attempt a field goal with three seconds to go. Colbert is in because he is the holder for Johnson. Right. So he will put the ball down. And this will be a 57-yard attempt by Johnson. And it is short. The Aggies will take a lead over Pat Dye and Auburn. Into the locker room here at the intermission of the 50th annual Cotton Bowl Classic. Texas A&M leading Auburn 15 to 13. We'll be back with the memories of Cotton Bowl past and the rest of our halftime activities. In a high-tech fighter, avionics like these are your eyes. In your car, this eye tells you the all-weather Delco Freedom battery is raring to go. One glance is all the maintenance it takes in any weather, from the blazing desert heat to flash frozen with sub-zero liquid gas. You'll see why Delco is the world's largest producer of maintenance-free batteries. Get rebates now on Delco Freedom Batteries. Call 800 for a participating retailer. Never wait for trouble. I'm 32 years old. And I love Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Wave adults are coming forward to challenge the notion that Frosted Flakes is just a kid's cereal. I know there's a tiger in the box. I like the taste, okay? Because you love them as a kid doesn't mean you can't love them as an adult. One day, our neighbor saw the package on the table. And we don't even have children. With that extra crunch in milk, that frosting just right, that taste is great as ever. <laughs> well, they've always been my favorite. So dig in. Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great. CBS Sports coverage of the Cotton Bowl will continue after this word from your local station. This is CBS. Texas Commerce is the bank for all Houston business. 
Ernest Hoetze's Compressor Engineering is a real family success story. We started Seco in the family garage with our sons as the workers. Just 20 years later, it's the largest company of its kind in the world. Texas Commerce has financed us from our very first machines of this expansion. Texas Commerce and its bankers, working for your success. How does it feel to take a thousand pounds of raw power into the gate and make him run for me? Don't be coming over on me this time, John. That'll save trip, McCarran. What's this horse got? Whoa. Easy, boy. Easy now. Straight now. That's it. Okay, partner. Show me something. Sports Illustrated. Get the feeling. Each year, we spend over $20 million picking up trash along our Texas highways. Messing with Texas isn't just an insult to the Lone Star State. It's a crime. Don't mess with Texas. Happy New Year from Channel 11. Time at the 50th Cotton Bowl and Texas A&M is two up on Auburn, 15 to 13. Let's take a moment and listen to the Auburn Tiger marching band. sponsored our most valuable player of the game award. Recently, Brent Musburger was on hand when Chevrolet presented their top honors for the season of 1985. Since the college football season began on CBS Sports in September, our commentators have selected Chevrolet most valuable players in each game. Chevrolet then donates $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of both participating schools for use by qualified students in their chosen academic fields. And annually, Chevrolet selects the offensive and defensive players of the year and the coaches of the year along with CBS Sports. And we're pleased today to be with Mr. Tom Stout, Chevrolet's general marketing manager who will make the presentations to the award winners. Tom? Brent, thank you. It's always a special thrill to honor year-long excellence, both on the playing field and in the coaching ranks. And it's certainly rewarding to honor the coaches whose responsibility it is to develop leadership and excellence in our athletes. Well, Tom, the Division 1A Coach of the Year is Fisher DeBerry of the Air Force Academy. The 47-year-old head coach is only in his second year at Air Force. He led the Falcons to an 11-1 record, their best since 1958, when the team was 9-0-2, as well as a share of the Western Athletic Conference crown, the Academy's first ever. Now, his high-flying Falcons set school records for touchdowns and points scored, and they were one of three Division 1A schools to score at least 21 points in each game that they played this season. Congratulations, Coach DeBerry. You're coming out of a pressure-packed season. The training, guidance, and inspiration you gave your players resulted in their going all out to make this a very memorable year. Well, thank you very much, and I accept this award with sincere appreciation. I just want to take this opportunity to sincerely thank CBS and Chevrolet for their tremendous support to college football. And I accept this honor on behalf of our young men at the academy and our, my fellow assistant coaches uh, for the tremendous job that they did during this year. They're the ones that really are deserving of this award. And I just appreciate them giving me the opportunity of pumping up the balls on Thursday afternoon before the game. But it is indeed an honor for everybody here at the United States Air Force Academy. Now it's time for the presentation of the Chevrolet Most Valuable Offensive and Defensive Players of the Year. Yes, Brent, and when you think of all the great performances we've seen all year long, to pick the one offensive and defensive player that stands out among all the others certainly had to be a great challenge. It really was, and our Most Valuable Defensive Player of the Year is defensive tackle Mike Hammerstein of the University of Michigan. 
Bo Schembechler calls his 6'4", 250-pound senior from Wapakoneta, Ohio, the best individual pass rusher ever to play for the Wolverines. For the season, Mike had 73 tackles, including 22 tackles for losses while sacking the quarterback nine times. Hammerstein was a consensus All-America, a Lombardi finalist, and one big reason why the Michigan Wolverines gave up only five touchdowns this last year. Mike, you're certainly most deserving of this award. And I should add that this trophy will be inscribed with your name on it and will go on display permanently at the College Football Hall of Fame in Kings Island, Ohio. Thanks. I'd just like to, on behalf of the Michigan team, the defense, thank CBS and Chevrolet for this award. I think it's uh, mainly a reflection of how well our team and especially defense played this year. We, uh, we came to play, we played hard, and we played good. And I'd just also like to thank CBS and Chevrolet for their continuing support in college football. Tom, certainly no surprise about our offensive player of the year. He is running back Bo Jackson from Auburn, and Bo will add this prestigious award to his growing list of honors, which include the 1985 Heisman Trophy and the Walter Camp Outstanding Player of the Year. A consensus All-America, Bo rushed for 1,786 yards and scored 17 touchdowns in 1985. Wow, Bo, you've had an exceptional season and a spectacular career at Auburn. In your leadership, teamwork and outstanding individual performances have inspired teammates and fans alike. Congratulations on a great year, Bo. Thank you very, very much. And I don't think that I could have done this without the help of my teammates. And I would like to give thanks to Chevrolet and CBS for nominating me for this award because there's a whole lot of good people out there that work just as hard as I have. And I'm just fortunate enough to come out on top. Well, let me add my congratulations to all the award winners, and Tom, thank you very much for your continued plus financial aid to the students through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program. Long ago on the frontier, homeowners insurance meant knowing the cavalry was close at hand. That kind of protection was hard to beat. It still is. Today, Kemper provides insurance to homeowners, condo owners, and renters with a wide range of money-saving discounts. And you can count on professional service from the independent agents who represent the Kemper Cavalry. To protect your homestead, compare Kemper. We ride with us. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Vortec muscle, V8 hustle. Chevy has V8s available up to a big 454 with unbeatable power and a full-size pickup. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Here's a big hand for the working man from Chevy Truck. For a limited time, get 7.9% financing on full-size 10 series pickups. Save an average of $1,680. Save $740 more on specially equipped pickups for a possible savings of $2420. See your Chevy dealer. Who's gonna be at the Silver Bullet tonight? Rob, when you get a chance. So, are you gonna call her? I'm thinking about it. Two cores light, Rob. What's there to think about call her? I said I might. Arnold, there were a hundred guys in here last night. She talked to you. Jack, I was sitting on her coat. It's a very unique approach. Give me the quarter. Rob, you got a quarter? There's no slowing down with the Silver Bullet tonight. Coors Light Beer. Dallas, Texas A&M leading Auburn 15-13. And on the field right now, the Fighting Texas Aggie Band. Let's go down and have a listen.
50 years and so many great moments and a man who has been associated with the Cotton Bowl through so many years. In fact, over at CBS Radio right now, Lindsey Nelson is working on his 26th Cotton Bowl broadcast. So when it was time for us to take a look back at all the golden memories, there was only man who could do it justice. Just one, Lindsey Nelson. If stadiums could only talk, what memories they could recite of days gone by, yesterday's heroes, moments won and lost in the sun. This marvelous stadium was first built in 1930 and over the past 50 years has housed one of college football's classic New Year's Day events, the Cotton Bowl. But it was not always the showcase that it is today. The Cotton Bowl Classic was started in 1937 by a Dallas entrepreneur, J. Curtis Sanford. The first Cotton Bowl featured Marquette University versus TCU. Tickets were $2.20, and Curtis Sanford promised each team $10,000. Frank Murray's Marquette squad was one of the nation's best. They were led by All-American Buzz Bubit, while TCU counted with slinging Sammy Ball. The game was expected to be a high-scoring affair, but neither Ball nor Bubit were the biggest stars. That honor belonged to Little Dutch Meyer, a third team in and the nephew of TCU head coach Dutch Meyer. The year was 1946. Texas would meet Missouri, and one young Texan would stand tall that day. He could run and kick, throw and catch like none before him. In that afternoon, he would do it all, having a hand in all 40 Texas points. He wore number 33 that day, but forever will be remembered as old number 22, Bobby Lane. As long as people talk about bowl games, forever they will remember the improbable meeting of Tommy Lewis of Alabama and Dickie Magel of Rice. Dickie Magel takes off to the right. Walkers turn the flankers, and that clears Dickie for the outside. Now for the unexpected. From out of nowhere comes Tommy Lewis, and Magel is tipped down. I thought the, the right side of the stadium fell in on me. It was a spontaneous thing. He just saw me running for a touchdown and say, hey, I'm going to get this guy. In the years to come, the memory of the 54 Cotton Bowl would be more bittersweet for one than the other. But like Roy Regals, the names Tommy Lewis and Dickie Magel have a special place in the minds and hearts of college football fans everywhere. The 64 Cotton Bowl would pit the nation's top two teams, Darrell Royal's 10-0 Longhorns and Wayne Harden's 9-1 Midshipmen. In the first five minutes, Texas scored on two TD passes from Duke Carlisle to Phil Harris. After that, the great Texas defense teed off on Heisman Trophy winner Roger Staubach. There was very little doubt who was number one. Darrell Royal had his 28-6 victory and the national championship. The 70s would open with Notre Dame versus Texas. With time running out in the fourth period and Texas losing 17-14, Texas found itself with fourth down and two, decision time for Coach Darrell Royal and his quarterback. The game would be decided by this James Street pass to Cotton Spire. And all of a sudden, I heard the roar come out of the far stands, and I knew then that Spire had made, obviously, an unbelievable catch, scooping the ball right off the ground in a pass reception that gave Texas four more opportunities to score. It wouldn't take four downs as Billy Dale raced in for the score, clinching the national championship for Darrell Royal's Texas Longhorns. In 1971, these two teams would meet again, but this time it would be Notre Dame's turn in the victory circle. Led by quarterback Joe Theismann, Notre Dame would produce 21 points in the first 16 and a half minutes. And Notre Dame would end one of the greatest streaks in college football, Texas's 30-game winning streak with a 24-11 victory. The 70 and 71 games added greatly to the rich history of the Cotton Bowl, for it brought together two schools with outstanding programs and two magnificent coaches and gentlemen. We didn't have even a hint of controversy or disagreement of any kind. And that's the way I like to, to, to coach. That's the way I like to play college football. And uh, I'm glad that Aaron and I had our two contests, and I think it came out about right, 50-50. 1979 featured Houston and Notre Dame in a very memorable game. An ice storm hit Dallas that year, and there is only one word to describe the weather, cold. Houston led 34 to 12 midway through the fourth quarter. But Joe Montana's passing and scrambling brought the Irish back. And with this two-point conversion to Chris Haynes, the Irish trailed 34 to 28, but Montana wasn't through. With two seconds on the clock, 
Montana rolled right and unbelievably found Haynes again in the corner of the end zone. The miracle man had knotted the score at 34. And Joe Eunice's kick would secure one of the greatest comebacks ever. And so ended the decade of the 70s. In the 80s at the Cotton Bowl, the parade of stars continued. Pittsburgh Panthers brought in a quarterback named Dan Marino. They played the Mustangs of Southern Methodist University who featured a running back named Eric Dickerson and how he could run. And who could forget Georgia's John Lastinger and his dash from 17 yards out into the end zone to defeat 11-0 Texas and deny the national championship to Fred Akers Longhorn. And they gave Vince Dooley a ride off the field. And the little man who won the Heisman Trophy, Doug Flutie, with his magnificent talents, passing and running. If stadiums could only talk, what memories they could recite of days gone by, moments won and lost in the sun. The Cotton Bowl Classic is more than a game, and its rich tradition is more than the victories and defeats. What sets it apart are the people, leaders like Bob Cullum, Felix McKnight, and Field Scoville, players like Tommy Lewis and Dickie Magel, Lane, Walker, Campbell, and Flutie, coaches named Bryant and Bell, Neely and Nealon, Royal and Parsegian, they are the heart and soul. They and thousands of others have embraced this game for one simple reason, their genuine love of college football. And so do you, Curtis Sanford. We salute you for having the vision and courage to bring a football game to the city of Dallas. From Sammy Vaughn to Bo Jackson, it's been a great 50 years. Hello, I'm Leona, your automatic teller. Can I help you with a student loan? You know a car loan, Leona. Fast travel. A home improvement loan. Hey. An auto loan? It's a General Motors car. Between Beats, state your name, address, social security number, present, and three prior employers between Beats. Uh, Charles Krauss, 21, 28 cents. Begin again. Charles Krauss. No, Charles Krauss. Begin again. Don't get hassled when you finance a new car or truck at GMAC Financing, only at your GM dealer. Uh, is there someone live I could talk with around here? Do you here? have one of our calendars? This is a fine calendar. We also have what they call a credit calendar. If I can only find it, I will be... If you're concerned about sodium, what antacid do you take? Tums is sodium free, and Tums absorbs more stomach acid than the other leading brands. Tired of those high fuel prices? Well, guess what? They're not getting any lower. Fight back with the Attic Blanket from Owens Corning. It's the most powerful roll of thermal protection you can buy. Before fuel bills put you in the red, get the attic blanket and put your house in the pink. Owens Corning, our building products, put your house in the pink. To learn more about college football, the Library of Congress suggests these books. Champions of College Football by Bill Libby. College Football Almanac by Robert M. Hours. The Heisman, a symbol of excellence by John T. Brady. These and many other interesting books are waiting for you in your local library and bookstore. Visit them. They'll be happy to help you read more about it. Relive all the excitement of the 50th anniversary Cotton Bowl Classic with a copy of the official souvenir program. Packed with colorful pictures and special features, it's the same program that sold at the Cotton Bowl. The outstanding players, the colorful coaches, and the memorable teams, all captured in this 144-page magazine. Order your copy of this historic program by sending $7 to Cotton Bowl Program. Post Office Box 47420, Dallas, Texas 75247. The Cotton Bowl Program. It's a classic. And here at the half of the 50th Annual Cotton Bowl Classic, Texas A&M leading by two points over Auburn. It is 15-13. Hey, the Aggies have had a couple of impressive runners in that backfield. Not only that, they've had a couple of good passes from Murray. These two fellows contributed, of course, Roger Vick and Keith Woodside. But Murray has also passed for 185 yards, and 
they have almost 300 yards in the first half of this football game. Now right, here's the Woodside run for the score. How about this lead block you wanted to talk Watch about? Tony, number 25, block Phillips. And Woodside cuts right off of that, right there. That's why that play went for a touchdown. It was 22 yards. Woodside zipping into the end zone for the Aggies. One of their two touchdowns that they scored. And, of course, how about the big fella, number 34, Bo Jackson? Well, you're the one that said yesterday if you were coaching, you'd get the ball in his hands on a pass. And that's exactly what happened here on a screen. Now you watch Wilson, number 75. The left guard also on the lead. He'll get a great block out in front of this. And, of course, when Bo Jackson gets the ball in his hands and in the open field, and that's what you need to do, that's what they need to do, no one's going to catch him because of his tremendous speed. All right, and two big developments, of course, in the first half era. The fact that Auburn changed quarterbacks, Texas A&M, well, they changed their field goal specialists. So looking ahead to the second half, what do you foresee? Well, I think we're going to see Jeff Berger, the number two quarterback. He's a 53% passer. But I, if I was Pat Dye, I would go back to what has brought him here, which is the running game, because the more first downs that he can grind out with Bo Jackson and Ware and the rest of them, the less time that Murray and company has to move the football. They are an explosive offensive football team, and that's what I would do if I was Pat Dye. All right, Aaron, you know, in the first half, Jim Nance mentioned in one of his reports that there have been allegations by one Dallas newspaper and a television station about recruiting violations at Texas A&M. I spoke to Jackie Sherrill about that. Does Texas A&M pay its football players to come here and play for Jackie Sherrill? No, they don't. And it's, it's one thing, and it's like we all in this profession. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, I'm trying to explain it, a guy driving down the road, driving 55 miles an hour, uh, but I don't even know who the guy is. I don't know what kind of car he's in, but I'm responsible because he's driving 55. Uh, our profession, uh, which being an athletic director and head coach, uh, there's 300,000, 500,000 people out there. And when somebody says, yes, you know what everybody does 24 hours a day, that's not true. Uh, but yet you're responsible for it, and we take responsibility, and full responsibility. Now, there is credibility here. There is credibility academically uh, with our students. There is credibility in things that we're doing with our program. Uh, am I going to sit here and tell you that anything outside uh, it has not been done? I can't say that. Uh, but I will tell you this, that if there is, then we'll correct it. We'll take measures to prevent it, and we'll go, go on about our business. Hamburger places serve lots of stuff. From burgers, to fish, to salad, even chicken. But with so much stuff, it's hard to do everything right. That's why at Kentucky Fried Chicken, all we do is chicken. Whether you choose the Colonel's Original Recipe Chicken, Crunchy Extra Crispy, or Kentucky Nuggets. For great tasting chicken, come to the chicken experts. Any other chicken may not be what it's cracked up to be. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. Some companies rent you a car. And that's it. But Hertz is with you all the way, with customer service representatives to speed you on your way. Computerized driving directions to help you find your way. And 24-hour road service in case you get stuck on the way. So you have a choice for your money. You can rent from a company that just gives you a car, or rent a car that gives you a company. Hertz, you don't just rent a car, you rent a company. Give me the sun, give me the wine, give me some country wine cooler. Give me the fun, give me the wine, give me the real juice cooler. Don't give me heavy, just give me light. All we want is a taste that's right. Give me real fruit, give me white wine, give me great taste, give me some of mine. Give me the sun, give me the wine, give me, give me, give me, give me some country wine cooler. The real juice cooler. Yeah. The 50th Cotton Bowl Classic is sponsored by Today's Chevrolet, who invites you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in 86. The investment firm of Smith Barney. They make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. And by Budweiser. Beechwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Ready to 
to start the second half. Texas A&M with its famed 12th man kickoff team set to go downfield. Those non-scholarship students, walk-ons who tried out, if you will. It started back in 1983. There were 200 candidates, all of whom played high school football, but all of whom were a step too slow or perhaps an inch or two too short. But they have found a spot in the hearts of Aggie fans everywhere. And here they come. Kickoff fielded at the 10, and for the left side, the return by Alvin out to the 35. Now, for a look at that Auburn offense, let's go down on the field, and here's Jim Nance. Well, Brent, Pat Washington will not start the second half at quarterback for Auburn. He has a bruised thigh, and if it doesn't loosen up, he will not return. Jeff Berger, the sophomore, will quarterback Auburn in this series. Let's go back upstairs. And here is Jeff Berger on the field. This is a first down starting the second half. The Tigers trail Texas A&M by two points. Berger has set behind him A.G. and, of course, Bo Jackson. The toss to Bo. Cole closes quickly on the right side at the 40. Larry Kelm, 65, their leading tackler, jumps in there. And there are some of the halftime numbers. Well, you can see the total yardage when you combine the two is 298 yards for Texas A&M and just 150 for Auburn. And that is the big figure right there. Of course, the score is still very close, 15-13. Era in that first half, the All-American linebacker, Johnny Holland, up against the Auburn offense, had only two tackles and assisted on four others. They run right straight up the middle, and getting away from Kell momentarily was Tommy Agee. Good little fake there inside to draw the linebackers to the right, and of course then Berger slipped the ball, and one of the fullbacks hands Ag, and he made good yardage on the play. This is what they need to do. Take a look at this action in heavy. Boy, I'll tell you, if you're an umpire in college or professional football, that can get you. And it's amazing, Eric, to me that more umpires don't get knocked about five yards like that one did. Well, Jeff Parks got two blocks that time. <laughs> That's right. A first down for Auburn to start the second half. In case you were not with us at the start of the game, Texas A&M fumbled and Pat Dye and Auburn took it in and had an early lead. A&M then scoring twice and Bo Jackson electrified this crowd of 73,000 with a 73-yard touchdown run after taking a pass from Pat Washington. The backup quarterback, Scott Berger, at the controls for Auburn. He throws short, Domingo Bryant intercepts. Way underthrown. Bryant is across midfield and down at the 48. And another big play by number six of Texas A&M. They had the receiver open here. Berger throws the ball, but it's underthrown, as you pointed out, Brent. You'll see the receiver open. Domingo Bryant does a beautiful job of reacting to the ball while it's in the air. The secondary has played exceptional. First and ten for Kevin Murray. Woodside and Tony are the running backs. And also, Tony gets the first down call. Gerald Robinson and Tracy Rocker rock him down on first down. And there is Domingo Bryant who made more big plays than any defender in the Southwest Conference this season. That seven sacks does a lot of blitzing. Good player. Second and nine. Murray brings Nelson in motion, and he's got him inside the 35-yard line. Powell bringing him down. First and ten for the Aggies. This Kevin Murray has got <laughs> some live arm. I was thinking the same thing. Boy, he really drills this one in there. Look at it from the side. That ball is not in the air very long, and it's right on target, folks. There he is. He gets good protection here. There is the zip. He really lets it go. And that ball is right there to the receiver. Tony turns upfield. Getting to the 27-yard line, Carricker, 47, smacking him down there. Coach Jackie Sherrill in his fourth year after taking that highly publicized quarter of a million dollar annual contract to come down to Texas A&M, did the job this year. 
when they had to, they beat SMU, Arkansas, and Texas to win the Southwest title. Tony again in the middle, squeezing close to the 20-yard line. Pat Thomas, 41, bringing him down there. For years, they have told Aggie jokes down here in the state of Texas. Yesterday at the banquet, Coach Jackie Sherrill stood up and told the audience, the Aggie joke that I've been hearing recently is, what do you call an Aggie four years after he's out of Texas A&M? The boss. <laughs> they like that one. First down. Woodside emotional pitch. Tony cuts inside. He's free at the five. He'll score. The Aggies have another touchdown to the Cotton Bowl. Pressure is on Pat Dye and Auburn. They must play catch-up football. It has been difficult for this team. AM electing to go for two points, leading 21-13. Murray will throw. Diving catch is not good. Nelson going after the ball, and it'll stay at 21-13. AM leading Auburn. So two turnovers have helped set up two of the three Aggie scores. Watch 95, Gerald Robinson, the left end, right there, fires to the inside, overruns it, and of course Tony cuts it back. Then he makes, he finds the daylight. Right there you see number 46, who is Edward Phillips. Number nine, Tom Powell misses. There's another miss. Great running by Tony, and they're in the end zone for another touchdown, and Texas A&M is a little ahead of schedule. They average 31 points a game. Trying to boost it to 23. Just underthrown and through the hands of a diving Jeff Nelson. So we'll come back. It's 21-13. A while ago, I made myself three promises. Never wear a tie, work for anyone, or be any place I didn't want to be. That's why I drive a Chevy S10 4 before. It lets me work, play, haul, go to dinner with Kim, or fishing with Sue. You know, if it doesn't fit my Chevy S10, it doesn't fit my life. Who's Kim? Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Holiday greetings from Budweiser. The people who bring you Budweiser wish you and yours the very best of everything this holiday season. Saturday, the Cowboys visit the Rams. Sunday, the Giants tackle the Big Bad Bears. The NFC Playoffs on CBS Sports. A small point, Coach, but I'm really surprised that they went for a two-point conversion leading by eight. I agree with you. Put the ninth point on the board, and it requires two scores. Now they could be tied with a touchdown and a two-point play. So here come the 12 men, all of them non-scholarship, including the kicker Slater, who is also a walk-on. And now we'll see them strut their stuff. I could hear some pads cracking and popping, and Fullwood was trying so hard to break one. But Dean Barry, number one, 12th men, was able to get down. But I must say that Auburn doing better than the average team on the returns. Let's take a look at the 12th man. Teams have been managed to crack an opening on the seam right here as you'll see it. But the reaction from the secondary people coming in closes down the hole very quickly and they've been able to do a good job. I think I would have stayed in English class. First and 10, the ball is at the 29-yard line. Here's the pitch to Bo Jackson, but he's jammed up. No hole there. Jay Muller cut him off. Matt Dye conferring on the sidelines. The plays are called upstairs by assistant coach Crow. Pat with final approval.
approval. And Michigan has jumped back. Weren't they behind 14-3? And now Bo Schimbeckler is in complete command of that Fiesta Bowl game. Oh, good job there. This is a second and nine. Berger faking to Jackson. And the play has been whistled dead. There was a penalty flag thrown on the far side against the Tigers. And that is the first penalty against Pat Dye here this afternoon in this Cotton Bowl. Legal procedure on the white, still first down. Carol, when the score was 15-13, you said to me, I think Pat Dye should try to run the ball and stay with what got him here. Now that it has grown to 21-13, do you still agree with that? Well, I, I think that they've got to do everything they possibly can to keep the ball away from the Texas A&M offense. They are just so explosive. Run the clock down. They are only one touchdown and a two-point play away from tying the ball game. Well, here's Berger to throw. Goes to Wigand, who was out of bounds on the far sideline. No completion. It'll be a third down. James Flowers, 15, was the Aggie defensive back working on that side. Trying to run an out pattern for a first down. Both the receivers going down. Break side. Flowers comes right up. Good coverage. Ball's out of bounds. There's no way it could have been Wigand. Could have caught that ball for any kind of yardage. play third down and 14 they'll run Bo Jackson if he can get outside and get the first down and then some across midfield that marvelous speed great call sprint draw Texas was deployed to put a blitz on Domingo Black was coming from that corner spot and they ran right inside number 30 AG does a good job in his lead block Watch here as the hole really opens as they're rushing the passer, thinking it's going to be a pass. There goes AG30 leading the play. And Wagant throws a block downfield, and Jackson's finally run out of bounds after getting the first down and additional yardage. 32 to be exact. Fullwood is in, and Reggie Ware, the fullback and the short man, crashes to the 40-yard line. Oh, Bryant and Sadler making the stop there for the Aggies. Scott Bolton checks in. Fullback Ware bending down into the huddle to hear what play has been called by the Auburn staff. Fullwood now is the tailback. Two tight ends, one wide receiver. Here's Fullwood. And he bounces free and gets to the 30-yard line for a first down. Bryant finally wrestling into the turf there. But that was a fine-looking run by Fullwood, who will now leave as Bo Jackson reappears for Auburn. You know, with the, the Tigers on the move here, we want to extend a greeting to our viewers in Central Alabama who are watching on WAKA Channel 8. Today marks the station's first day of broadcasting CBS programming exclusively in the Selma, Montgomery area. And your favorite football team just ran A.G. right straight ahead. He busts past the 25-yard line on that first down. You know, having said that's their favorite team, let me just add to that sentence. You are watching your favorite team on this New Year's Day. I don't want all those letters from the Roll Tide folks down there. <laughs> That other favorite team down there has already played its bowl game. Boy, that Mike Shula is a good quarterback, isn't he? Berger handing off. Bo Jackson trying to come around the corner. Out of bounds before he could get to the 20. Wayne Asbury and Johnny Holland over there cutting him off. Well, they're in that four down area, and that's exactly what I would do is stay on the ground and keep pounding it. That's the way they've had success this year. Jackson's now 14 for 72 yards and one touchdown. Of course, that was at 73 yarders, so he's up to 140-some yards in total offense. A touchdown and a two-point conversion, and we'd have a deadlock in the Cotton Bowl. 8.54 to go in the third. Short man Ware spinning, and he is down to the 17-yard line, and it was Johnny Holland, the All-American linebacker, tackling him there. Tommy Agee replacing Ware and Holland looking over at the sideline. The defensive call. 
watch, watch on this third down play. Here's Jackson carrying out his fake completely on a third down and short yardage. Like they're going to pitch the ball out to him. Pulling. He's an unselfish, unselfish football player that all the team members love. There's a fake to Jackson again. He'll throw incomplete. Now, Todd Howard did not buy the fake. He went right for the quarterback, and that disrupted the play. Bryant had coverage on the outside, but number 73 is the one who disrupted that attack by Auburn. Well, they've had great difficulty in trying to establish any kind of a passing game. Now they're faced with a second down situation in 10. They'll use their two tight ends. Agee's the fullback. Wagan is split out far to the left. Jackson in the middle, close to the 10-yard line. It'll be a third down. Auburn must get to the seven for a first down in this drive. It's again a fine fullback lead. They had a great hole blocked at the point of attack. And Jackson found it, but now they're faced with third down. Just three or four. If they did run that on the first play, Frank, they would have had second down and short. Auburn quarterbacks are only three of 11 throwing today. And that's why they'll run Jackson, and he's going to be short. Alex Morris was the first Aggie to hit him, and Kelm was not too far behind. They're trying to muscle it right off this right side. You see 82 there blocking down to the inside, which is Jeff Parks. But there just wasn't enough of a seam for him to get the first down. Now the coach is having some difficulty with the play being called. And they must hurry, of course, with the 30-second clock in progress. But we're going to have a timeout call, too. So there was some confusion on the far sideline, and we'll be right back. John Houseman for Smith Barney. When it comes to personal service, today's Gulliver-sized firms are often tied in knots. They make their customers feel like Lilliputians. Smith Barney is managed on a human scale. Big enough to offer an array of investment services, not too big to treat clients as individuals. Smith Barney, they make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. My wife was having our second child, and uh, so Anthony and I were on our own. And we went to the store, and I picked up a bargain baby shampoo, not Johnson's. I thought I was just helping out, but we used it, and Anthony got some shampoo in his eyes, and he began to cry. And uh, I felt awful. They may say baby shampoo, but many bargain brands sting, irritate eyes. Only Johnson says, no more tears. No more tears isn't just an ad slogan. It's very real. We're sticking with Johnson's. Just when it seemed we couldn't go any higher or make our batteries last any longer, we at Duracell topped ourselves. Introducing the new highly improved Copper Top battery. So improved it'll last up to 30% longer than any battery we've ever made. Once again, Duracell reaches a new height. Duracell, when it comes to making them last longer, we never stop. Well, Pat Dye used that timeout to decide he would kick a field goal in this situation. It is fourth and two. Chris Johnson with a 26-yard attempt. And Johnson boots one through for the Auburn Tigers. And they inch a little closer to Texas A&M. 7-19 to go in the third quarter. And A&M leads by five points. 21-16. to the NFL today live from Anaheim we'll be on the air at 3.30 Eastern time we'll meet John Robinson his Los Angeles Rams and we'll check in live see who's going to play quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys down here in Dallas everyone expects it to be Danny White and everyone expects it to be a very close football game out there Saturday afternoon too 
So it'll be the Cowboys and the Rams in our coverage. Starts at 3.30 Eastern time here on CBS. And then on Sunday, well, the cast moves to Soldier Field in Chicago. Dan Deardorff will join us there. And we'll take a look at a city that has gone wild over its NFL team. One that's gone wild over the Giants is New York. I got to the airport when I left to come down here. And the fellow checking my bag at the airlines, he said to me, the New Jersey Jets are out, but the New York Giants are still playing. <laughs> you must own an airline. Huh? You walk a few miles. Here's the kickoff by Johnson. And Rod Harris of the Aggies with the return gets out to the 22-yard line. 7-14 to go here in the third. It is 21-16. Well, here comes that Aggie offense that has impressed you so much today, Coach. Well, they really have been tremendous. They, I tell you, I'm really impressed with them. It's one of the best offenses I have seen. They're so well balanced. They keep a lot of pressure on you. And they're so young. And next year, they've got a 368-pound tackle. It was redshirted this year because of an injury. Marshall Land will join them. They run with Vic, who has replaced Tony in this series, and he gets out past the 25-yard line. They're so tough what they can alternate fullbacks who are of almost equal ability. As we talked at the top of the show, the ability of both Vic and Tony and the yardage that they've made, they had 20 touchdowns between the two of them, of course. As we pointed out, the Jackson had 17, so you can see the reason why because of this offense. Vic with 58 yards, Tony with 53. They're the fullback twins of the Aggies, and here comes Vic looking for daylight. Got just beyond the 30-yard line, Brian Smith, number 90, meeting him there for Auburn. It will be short of a first down. So they'll set up a power formation here. It's about third and perhaps a yard and a half. Ira Valentine has come into the full house set along with Harry Johnson. Well, it's going to be close. It sure is. The middle of that Auburn defense was ready. Kevin Murray, 14, checking over there to see if Vic got that football past the line. They'll use an official's timeout to measure for it. I don't think he got it from this vantage point. It's going to be awful close. Well, Tracy Rocker and Arthur Johnson of Pat Dye's defensive unit plugged that hole. Nice. Short. He is that short. And Texas A&M will punt at the six-minute mark of the third. Could wind up being a key third down in this cotton ball. We'll have to see. Tiger holding the War Eagle aloft over there. Gingerly. Todd Chance is back to punt and Trey Gaines the return man. Low punt. Gaines lets it bounce and it takes an Aggie bounce. I'm not so sure he shouldn't have fielded it on one hop. Ball getting down to the five yard line. It'll be tough field position for Bo Jackson when we come back. A 65 yard punt. Hilton brings you competition classics. Notre Dame takes on Houston. Frigid temperatures force Irish quarterback Joe Montana from the game when his body temperature drops dramatically. But a hot bowl of chicken soup revives Montana. He returns with his team behind 34 to 12, then leads them all the way back for a 35 to 34 victory. The Fighting Irish, their comeback effort is awarded with the most miraculous win in Cotton Bowl history. It's what separates one company from another. Effort. It's what it takes to stay ahead. Effort. It's the difference between a job and a job well done. Effort. It's what makes Hilton America's business address. Well, let's go downstairs to Jim Nance. Jim? 
Brent, one of the top sports stories, I believe, in 1985 was this young man winning a PGA event, amateur Scott Verplank. Scott, what are you doing these days? Well, I'm in school, finishing up at Oklahoma State. How about golf coming up in the future? What do you have? Well, I have a lot of tournaments coming up. I'm going to play the tournament champions in about two weeks and play a few tour events as well as some college tournaments. All right. We will see you at the Masters as well. I'll be there. Of course, we'll have that on CBS. The PGA Tour opens up in January 25th, the Phoenix Open here on CBS. Let's go back upstairs. Young man with a great future. There's the pitch to Bo Jackson. From the six-yard line, he comes out near the 12-yard line. Johnny Holland riding him down. Jeff Berger, the young quarterback who is under the gun right now for Pat Dye, stands six feet, weighs 200 pounds. He started a couple of games for Dye at quarterback against Southern Mississippi and Tennessee, and he played for Auburn in five games. He rushed for 46 yards on 12 carries. His longest pass play was 42 yards to Freddie Wagan. And he will run Reggie Ware straight ahead into the heart of that Aggie defense. That's going to leave them with a third and four. Time running down here in the third quarter. 21-16, Texas A&M leading Auburn. You might look at that sprint draw again that they had success with on Jackson in the passing situation. Jackson cutting upfield into the hole and the first down for Auburn. Big first down. Gets them out of a punting situation. Keeps the drive alive. Let's take a look at Johnny Holland, number 11, the All-American linebacker right there. Keeping on his feet, moving with the pitch sweep. Warding off the blocker, 87 Middleton, and then coming back inside and holding on to Bo Jackson. Nice job by Holland. Jackson has now rushed for 90 yards. A.G. returns as the Auburn fullback. Middleton is in motion. The fake to A.G., the pitch to Jackson. And the defense would not let Jackson turn inside that time. And Domingo Bryant rode him down. The Aggies held their position defensively. Watch Jackson, who is such a great talent, run under control. He lets his blocking develop. Then he will see whether or not there's daylight there. Carrington has cut off the inside. Bryant comes off of Middleton and makes a splendid tackle right there. Second and nine. And of course, yesterday, one of the plays we watched Auburn practice was the halfback option pass from this situation. They'll run Jackson straight ahead into the hole, and he has another first down. Corrington, 10, brings him down. Kip Corrington, academic All-American down here with a great point average of 3.94 in philosophy. You see the sprint draw again in the passing situation. Good blocking. Randy Stokes comes around, number 64, and pulls the lead it. Good yardage on the play, a first down. And that put Jackson over the 100-yard mark rushing. And that is his 22nd 100-yard game. Brent Fullwood. You know, he's only played 39 games. How about that naked bootleg by Berger? He'll keep it. Now he'll chuck it downfield to Parks. And Parks gets across midfield. Had he crossed the scrimmage line? Jackie Sherrill is complaining that he did. But there is no flag down there. It's a 23-yard game. Now a couple of the officials are conferring. Now the referee brings in a third one down there for a huddle. And a scrimmage is and just in count. front of the marker right here. Let's see how close he gets to it. Oh, he's past it. His right foot is past the line. They missed it. But he was close. He was close, coach. <laughs> that only counts in horseshoes, as they say, huh? First down for Auburn. That was a... The official missed that call. That should have been, should have been brought back. And it could be a big factor in this football game. Yes. Sure, if they can keep this drive going. Definitely. There's Bullwood. Got away from one tackle, but not Johnny Holland. 
Let's take a look at that. With Arrow, do you suppose you can draw the line of scrimmage for us? Here's the line of scrimmage, and his foot will hit about here. You see the ball is just beyond that. Let's take a look again. He makes the fake, bootlegs the ball. Now watch that line and watch his right foot and where the ball was. His right foot is way past it. Not as close as I thought. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no wonder Cheryl was so upset down there. He had a right to be. Second and nine. Berger under pressure just as he's being walloped by Sadler. Held the ball perhaps a fraction of a count too long that time. Rod Sadler someday will be strutting in the National Football League. He's out of Columbia, Georgia, and he still has another year to go at Texas A&M. Freddie Wagan had broken open deep that time for Auburn era if they could have gotten it to him. No, right, exactly, Brandy. Just did not release it. He couldn't pull the trigger. Here's third and nine. Fullwood's the tailback. Drills one to the sideline. And it is complete over there on the far side of the field. And that is Tillman. So a first down for Auburn. The ball is at the 35-yard line. The freshman contributes. And this is their most impressive quarter of the day. And, of course, one of the major changes was at quarterback. With Berger driving them and hitting that third down pass, getting credit for another completion <laughs> in the previous series. AG straight ahead, big hole to the 27-yard line. So this will be second and short. And this is where Pat Dye likes to keep his running team, is second and short. They're going to keep that ball on the ground, I think, and just march it out. That's their best, best bet. Now, the reason they're having such a good quarter is they're having a good offensive quarter. They're keeping the ball away from Texas A&M. Second and two. Pitch outside to Jackson. Jackson to the corner. Inside the 20 to the 16-yard line. Another Auburn first down. Berger did a good job on that play because he was forced very early. And it was tough for him to shovel that ball out, but he did get it to Jackson. Good reaction on the option play. Watch right here. He takes the ball to A.G. and just pitches it out beyond Bryant, who was dogging. And good fielding by Bo Jackson, and he thrust right through for the first down. A year ago, Auburn was operating out of the wishbone attack. Now Jackie Sherrill must look at the eye, and that, of course, is to take advantage of Bo Jackson's skills. They run that sprint draw, and Jackson is stopped at the 15-yard line. Larry Kelm, 65. They're the meeting for the Aggies. Auburn trailing by five, but driving. Inside of a minute, third quarter. And the Tigers have dominated here so far in this second half. Here's Fullwood, who is checked in, breaking free with a second effort, and he's across the 10-yard line. It's a muscular Auburn team. We saw this kind of a drive in the fourth quarter against Alabama. Exactly the same type of drive. Staying on the ground, muscling the ball. Good, good second effort here. And he comes out where they've got, what, third and about two. This is third and two, and the 14th play in this series. The short man, straight ahead. Reggie Ware, who was operating out of that set, along with Fullwood, and the officials will call a timeout here. And make sure that they get a proper measurement. Five seconds up on the clock before we will start the final quarter of what has been a very entertaining Cotton Bowl game. He's got it. Well, that possession time was really a key factor. Watch the left tackle right here, which is Steve Wallace, 78. A 
doesn't get the job done, and that's the end of the quarter. 15 minutes of the 50th annual Cotton Bowl Classic left. Five-point game. We'll be right back. This fight's for all that you do. Somehow you always come through. You keep it going. Your pride's really showing. Nobody shines like you. Yeah, you make America work and Here's to you, Beechwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. This fun's for you. Today's Chevrolet is a little import called Spectrum. A spectacular combination of fun and practicality. We call it... Spectrumality. Solid. Spectrumality. Price. Spectrumality. Room. Spectrumality. Technology. Spectrumality. Spirit. Spectrumality. Economy and more. All part of the new Chevy Spectrum. A spectacular combination of fun and practicality called... Spectrumality. It's today Chevy. Chevy. This is CBS. Running smooth and silent. Hey, son. Hey, son. Running strong and sure. Hey, son. Hey, son. Running smooth and easy. Running with the tiger. Running smooth. For our highest octane unleaded premium ever, try Exxon Extra. It quiets, knocks, and pings for smooth performance. Running smooth and easy. Toyotathon 86 is almost over! You haven't made your Toyotathon deal? What are you waiting for? Prices may never be lower, trade in allowances may never be bigger, but time is running out. So your Toyota dealer is staying open late. And talking extra value deals to break his all time sales record. Deals that can drive down the price, even on Toyota's lowest price truck. There's still a good selection. Don't wait. Toyotathon 86 is almost over. Hurry! Happy New Year from Channel 11. The 50th Cotton Bowl Classic is sponsored by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. Visa. Accepted worldwide for shopping, dining, and travel. Visa. It's everywhere you want to be. And by Tenneco. Building on quality. We start. Beating Auburn here in the 50th Cotton Bowl game. It's 21-16. Auburn with a first and goal. Here's the pitch to Bo Jackson. He scored twice, and this time he's just inside the two-yard line. Era, Auburn is doing what you said they had to do. Exactly. Maintain possession of the ball in that third quarter. They had it 11 minutes and 49 seconds to AM's 3-11. And you can't generate much of an offense with that. That's exactly what they had to do, and they've done it in the third period. Whether or not they can do it in the fourth, that's yet to see. Kyle Collins checks in with the play. It's second and goal. Just a little longer than two yards for the touchdown. Jackson is stuffed that time. Todd Howard, number 73, led the Aggie defenders into that hole. This will make it a third and goal from the two-yard line. Defense, which has yielded two touchdowns to Bo Jackson today from five yards, 73 yards on a pass, determined to stop Auburn here. In the Alabama game, it, was, it took Auburn to the fourth down, and they just barely made it with their fullback, where I believe, going over the middle. Let's see what happens here. Jackson is tripped up. He was going to go airborne. And nose guard Samuel Bryant was the first to get to a foot. Boy, he really tries to get in here, but the defense of Texas A&M is doing a great job at the goal line. You can see the fullback, A.G., just dives over the pile. If he'd had the ball, he'd have made it. It is fourth down. 13 minutes to go. Auburn trailing by five points. The War Eagle watching on. The Cotton Bowl could be coming down to this play. They will have to call a timeout because 
Only six seconds remain on the 30-second clock. Berger to the sidelines. Auburn is slow in getting its plays out there. Hand woman's back and McDonald's has got it. Gonna show you how in case you forgot it. Doesn't mean a lot if you don't get it hot. Woman up to it with a hot Big Mac. Clap your hands, now you're getting the knack. Feel the heat of the beat of some hot French fries. When it's blowing cold, we got it hot inside. It's a good time for the great taste. And one and one and one. If that's how you do it, come on, there's nothing to it. Slap it, clap it, wrap it on your lap. It really can be fun on your tongue, tongue, tongue on the table. Are you able? Hot chicken, chicken, chicken. And one and a chicken, look a chicken, look a chicken. Slap it on your knee from a DLT. Put your hands around the hot and beat the quarter pounder. It's a good time for the great taste. That's a bit of water, you don't get it hot. Yeah. <laughs> you still got it. We're back, and from the shadow of the end zone, you can see the AM defenders exhorting the 12th man up in the stands to give them all the help they can. And Auburn will have to concentrate at that line of scrimmage to get this play called, Coach. I wonder whether or not they'll take a chance and go to the option play, which is very difficult to defend at this point. That's AG 30. Jackson 34 won't get it. Larry Kelm, 65, let the defenders in, and they stopped the Heisman Trophy winner. Watch from behind the defense, keeping an eye out for 34, and ever so quickly it was Kelm who slashed in there and got a hand on him. First down, AM hands the ball to Anthony Tony, their senior fullback, and they will start to attempt a time-consuming drive. One more look, Eric, at that play. Great again, you can't, you can't say enough about this Texas A&M defense rising to the occasion here when they were challenged at the goal line. Kelm was the first to get in there, and then he got support from the rest of that Aggie team. And Coach, it is second and eight. Aggies leading by five. And it's Tony again from the eye formation. They used the short man, and Harold Hallaman, the nose guard for Auburn, stopped it. Well, it may have been justice in that particular drive or that uh, failure by Auburn on the basis of that one play in the middle of the field, which was really should have been called back and, and forced into a punt. That was a third and eight, and Berger stepped over the scrimmage line and was credited with a completed pass that kept the drive going. Now there's some confusion for AM, but the extra player gets off the field in time. On this third down, Murray throw from his own end zone and complete to Duncan Webb. What a big play by the Aggies coming out as Kevin Murray coolly steps back in his own end zone and nails his tight end. Boy, a gutsy play here by Murray. He finds Webb crossing. Wide open here, everybody's chasing instead of being in front to react to the ball. And it's a first down, big play. And the young man will return to guide the fortune of the Aggies. Applauding that 11-yard gain, he's 13 of 23, 200 yards passing on the day. Running Tony and Rocker rocks him. Well, it's not for the national championship, but it's been a good one, hasn't it? It really has been a great football game. And there's still a lot of it left with 11 minutes, 11 minutes left. Second down and eight. I don't think I would disagree with the choice of die to go for it down there because he would I'd say, okay, I want that lead if I can get it. If I don't, I'll leave the ball at the one-yard line for him. But Murray bailed him out and has brought him out to the 20. Nelson in motion. And they will pitch to Johnson. Johnson 
nimbly got around that corner and out close to the 25-yard line. Kevin Porter was there and the Auburn offensive players watching from the sideline, wanting to get the Here ball back the with time running down. You know, when you look at this 8-3 and three record, Pat Dye and Auburn this year, they lost to Tennessee. They did not play well at all, and Dye is the first to admit it. But they were beaten late by Florida, 14-10, and then they lost the heartbreaker to Alabama. The common denominator all had outstanding quarterbacks who beat Pat Dye and Auburn. There's another one operating right now. Kevin Murray on third and three for the Aggies. Back to throw it. Could not run out of trouble. Number 74, Tracy Rocker, bringing him down, and that will force a punt right here. A big defensive play. It really was. They had man-to-man -man coverage underneath with deep secondary and zone. It worked for him that time because Murray had to run the ball on the inside, and the line got him. So the punt will come.